Aries? Definitely, that is a kind of a, a reason as well. We have the strength, uh, which is spin attack, and, and also I think this wicket is uh, the second game on it, and we know that on the fourth innings how it's going to be. And uh, I think that's the kind of mindset we have that yes, we're going to bat first, and then just uh, let what what we do in the second innings. You've had brilliant individual performances from yourself, from Mohamed Nabi and Karote early in his international career. Would you like a bit more from the rest of the team? Definitely. I think, you know, T20 is all about like, you know, two, three players step up and uh, they contribute and they win the game for you. But uh, the rest of the players, they just try their best to, to, to uh, help them and support them as much as possible. But, you know, everyone is trying their best, giving 100%. That's what something which matters to me. It's not about the result what come out, but it's more about the, uh, the effort they put in the field. And that's something which I love the most. And everyone is contributing, even if it's a single uh, run they save in the boundary. That is something which contributes for the team. So, yeah, happy with everyone with their performance and uh, happy with the senior Nabi stepping up and, and contributing. Just finally, any, any team changes? Nabi go with the same side. Rashid, best Thank of luck. You. Nice to see you. Okay, Rashid Thank Khan you. choosing to have a bat first. Paul, what would you have done? I, I suspect you might have bowled. No, I think I would have had a hit. Um, seems to be the winning formula at the minute here in the last couple of days. So uh, we're getting out there in the field and we'll, we've been bowling really well up top um, the first few games. How good is it for Irish cricket? This rivalry seems to have been reborn in a big way on this tour. Yeah, it's always great games against Afghanistan. Uh, I think every player wants to play in a serious decider, and it doesn't get much bigger than this. First debut as captain, you made history by winning an overseas tour in this format against a Test Nation. You could make it back to back here against Afghanistan. How much would that mean? I think it just means a lot to win a series. You know, uh, result isn't necessarily the end game here with what we've got coming up, but it would be a great start to what our process and our, our build up to the World Cup would be. So, looking forward to another okay. good game. Finally, any team news? No. Same team. Thanks, Sterling. Thank you. Okay, that's the news from down here in the middle for the final time. Afghanistan have won the toss. They're going to have a bat first. Right the first time, I think. In vision, in vision, teams. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'll just mean, yeah. So it's, um, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Okay, watch the cameras, boys. Watch the cameras. Hello, everybody. Nick. Ah, sorry, 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 sorry. Huh? Let's envision first, right? Oh, sorry. Not envision first? No. Okay, sorry. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the highlights of this final game. It's the third T20 International. What a match this promises to be. Remember, it's one all as we lead into this one, Afghanistan versus Ireland, and from the Shah Jahan Cricket, Shah Jahan Cricket Club, I should say. Now, this promises to be an absolute beauty. Both sides have uh, played pretty well in the white ball game. Of course, Ireland won the one-day series, and Afghanistan will want to level it up in this one as well with the... Uh, ah, I've got to do that again. Sorry. Sorry. Hello everybody and welcome to the highlights of the final T20 International between Afghanistan and Ireland coming to you from the Shah Jahan Cricket Stadium. Now just to remind you it is one all in this series and of course this is such an important game this one 
And if both teams are going to want to fire up and make sure they hit the ground running because the power play is going to be very important. Just to let you know that Afghanistan won the toss and they have elected to bat first. Let's have a look at the teams as we uh, go any further through this. We'll uh, look at the senior players. They're the guys that we need to really kick in. Rashid Khan is uh, obviously going to be a, a very important player for Afghanistan. Mohamed Nabi as well as he was in the game too. Gabaz needs some runs and Karote has done a fine job in his debut series. And for Ireland, Paul Sterling as the captain needs to lead by example. Harry Tech Missed out, got a first baller actually in the second game. Mark Adair has been good and Josh Little has showed some very good skill. Right, I let's pick up the action and join our commentators. at his best.
One up in the three match series, Ireland stunned Afghanistan early in the second T20 international, dismissing four of their batsmen with just 14 on the board. With Afghanistan in trouble, Mohammad Nabi came to the team's rescue with a brilliant half century. An inspired cameo from Rashid Khan ensured Ireland was set a challenging target. The Afghan skipper then conjured some magic with the ball. His haul of four wickets meant the series is tied at one all. The tour is set for a thrilling climax. We are looking forward to this one. It is the final one, of course. The third T20 International, Afghanistan versus Ireland, are coming to you live in beautiful conditions from the Shahjah Cricket Stadium. Now, this promises to be a beauty. Before we go any further, let's just recap on what's happened on this tour, Ireland's tour of Afghanistan. And the only test, Ireland won that by six wickets in Abu Dhabi. The first one day, Afghanistan won that by 35 runs, so that was pretty comfortable. The first one here in Shahjah. The second one, match abandoned. The third one, Afghanistan won that by plenty. Also with 15 overs to spare, also in Shahjah. And then, of course, the first two T20s. Ireland won the first one by 38 runs, so that was a good victory. And it got a little bit tight in the second one when it looked like Afghanistan were coasting. Uh, in the end, Ireland came back quite nicely. Delaney played superbly to get them uh, relatively close, I should say. But we are looking forward to this. One or it is, it is the decider. And I've got a couple of blokes to uh, chat to as we lead into this one for Dai and also Niall. Right up, boys, straight away. Niall, what do you want to see from Ireland for this one to win the decider? Oh, well, first of all, it's a great opportunity, you know, to win a test, uh, win a T T20 series against a uh, full member nation, Ireland overturned Zimbabwe not long ago in a similar format. But what I want to see Ireland, I want to see them be brave. I don't want to see any hangover from last night's loss. It could have been a lot worse last night. Ireland got close, as you mentioned, due to Gareth Delaney's brilliance at the back end. So I want to see a fearless approach. I want to see them come out with a bit better planning against spin bowling. That's been the Achilles heel. Rashid Khan and Karote has been devastating for Afghanistan. Ireland have had no answers. So I want to see some better planning. They don't have to take Rashid Khan down. They don't have to take Karota down. They don't have to smash Nabi out of the ground. But they must find a way to accumulate better. Against seam bowling, they've been fine. And with ball in hand, the seamers for Ireland have been exceptional. Little Adair up front have been as good as any opening bowling attack I've seen in a while with that new ball. So they will cause problems. So but the most important thing, Hazy, is the clarity of thought I want to see from the batting lineup. For Dai, same question to you. What do you want to see from your boys? Um... I think uh, Afghanistan has done quite well in the second T20 to have brought themselves back into the series. This is a decider. The good thing is that the captain has trusted the young lads to play their natural game, which is what I would like to see for them to do today as well. Just play your natural game and repeat what you've done in the previous game. Play with confidence. Rahmanullah Gurbaz hasn't been able to make runs. He was the player of the tournament in the one-day series played between these two countries. So probably looking forward to see some runs from Rahmanullah Gurbaz. Particularly from the T20 we played yesterday, I was more happy than the spinners from Naveen ul -Haq. He was well in control. He conceded only 23 runs of his four overs. I think he was very crucial. So important is the Pacers do their job. And now, as a keeper, as a former keeper, I mean, and you've seen the, some of the best spinners around the place. Yeah. What about Rashid Khan yesterday? Yeah, he's, he's been absolutely unbelievable. He's very difficult to pick from a batting point of view, from a keeping point of view, he would have been a joy to keep to. But what Rashid Khan does, he piles the pressure on, and then you start playing outside your comfort zone. That's a beauty. Harry Tector's Ireland's premier batter, beautiful ball. George Dock were totally done by length there. That's what Rashid Khan does, Hazy. He does you on length because he's bowling around that 58 to 60 mile an hour mark. That's fast for a wrist spinner. So you can't get down the surface. So you end up playing from the crease. And then Rashid Khan standing at the top of his mark saying, I know you're not coming down the wicket. I'm going to bow into the surface and I'm going to attack the stumps. LBW and bold, crucial for Rashid Khan. I'll have no answers so far. From a keeper's point of view, why is he difficult to pick? Well, I'll tell you what, his arm, his arm rotation is very quick, Hazy. He gets, he gets over his front foot very quickly. So you're not getting a good sight of the ball. Not like a traditional, you know, the great Shane Warren. You're seeing the ball out of the hand, beautifully, a bit of drift. It's very difficult. He's not a big turner of the ball away from. So a leg spinner, he's not turning the ball massively. You should play him as a as a batter, play for the googly. But from a keeping point of view, uh, he's difficult because he's so fast. And Mohamed Dabi had a terrific game yesterday with the ball, but terrific with the bat. Well, absolutely, he's been in supreme touch. We just saw brilliant batting display from Mohamed Nabi. That is Mohamed Nabi that people come to watch. That six was shot of the day for me. He was in a good touch. 
He played nicely. He constructed the innings together uh, with Sidi Qatar. I think that partnership he put together of 79 it was, was the key for Afghanistan to win. I mean, how often can a team come out of having lost four wickets, for only 14 runs, and then come out winners with a margin of 10 runs? That tells the class of Muhammad Nabi. And he also contributed with the ball as well. One for 14 off his three overs. There was another spin also contributed, and that was uh, a youngster, 19 years of age. He's playing in his debut T20 International Series. Karota Kid, we're going to hear more about him now. <laughs> कल से मैं लुमड़ाई टी ट्वेंटी मैच का न मैं डिड खुशहाली एहसास का सर के अलग अलग प्रेशर ही जक मैं डेब्यू मैच हूँ न मैं कोशिश का उसे ज़्यादा खुल कुम प्रेशर से दा जो पर मुखालिफ कसान हुआ चुका मैं लगभग मिसाल अर्लेंड टीम बने न हम दाग उसे जो पर के कामयाब सुन वो कल अच्छे जो लुमड़निया वार तराग अगर लुमड़ाई बाल चिमा का उस लग द तासिर लान दियो मा अगर न बाच कलमा वेकट वाक्स ताल नौकुमा का तासिर सिव हमाना लरिस वा उमा गखपल कुम डाडा बॉलिंग शुरू कर नौके के जर कामयाब हो अक्सर टीम में मा गखपल अफ़ानान कतल दिया वांस आने क्रिकेट टीम में कतल मा गखपल से जो जम हम ये वो लोग गाड़े वो सम आओ दे वाइंसान ना माइंड आगे वो कम दसे कस में ना यानी ख्वाहिद दसे जो घर पर से लार सम साल दे घर आ कुम क्रिकेट से दागा जम जाकम वो माँ बसे अफगानान का लिल दल ना माँ बा कोशिश काउ जो जख वाला हम क्रिकेट आ सम नंगियाल खरोटे इज ग्रेट अचीवमेंट फॉर अफगानिस्तान दैट वी हैव फाउंड सच अ गुड अलराउंडर ही कैन बॉल ही कैन बैट एंड ऑब्वियसली इन फीलिंग ही इज अ गन फील्डर एंड द वे ही इज बॉलिंग इन परफॉर्मिंग इन लास्ट टू टी ट्वेंटी गेम्स आई थिंक इट्स आउटस्टैंडिंग ही केम इन पावर प्ले इन प्रेशर टाइम सिक्स ओवर इट्स नॉट इजी इन टी ट्वेंटी क्रिकेट एंड ही केम इन गिट अ बिग विकेट ऑफ स्टर्लिंग आई नो स्टर्लिंग एवरीबडी नोज ही इज सच अ फाइन एंड क्लास प्लेयर I think he's just following simple things and he's not doing extra because his ability to bowl quicker one and uh, not give him a time to the batters that's one of his uh, success that he's uh, doing in last few 20 matches so in the next couple of months or year he will be a big star for Afghanistan yeah, there's a few guys that are uh, saying that as well he debuted in the one day series and he's now debuted in the T20s and he looks like he belongs at this level well, that tells you how the Afghanistan players have inspired the young generation in Afghanistan. Nangyalai Kharote is the testimony to that. He's bowled that delivery to Paul Sterling alongside some others. Josh Hazelwood to Rahmanullah Gurbaz, probably a few others, but that was the delivery. I mean, he completely bamboozled a, a, a caliber of... Uh, Paul Sterling, that tells the standard. So he's a gun fielder. He's a good batsman as well. A lot is counted when it comes to his batting as well. But uh, they call him back home, Nungo. Nungo has done an amazing job uh, <laughs> on his debut in the T20. He certainly has. And he'll uh, play a role again uh, today, of course, in this decider also. Now, one other thing that's going to play a role in this decider is the pitch. And Tino is our pitch doctor. Let's see what he had to say about the pitch. Pleasant conditions in Sharjah for this final T20 International of the Series. And there's a breeze that's coming across the stadium here and there. So I think that'll just help dissipate that little bit of dew that's been there in the previous matches. Yesterday, there was a bit of spray out there. There was today as well. So I don't think that's too much for the captains to be concerned about. The pitch is number six, and it's the same one that was used last night. And if I take a look at it today, it looks very similar other than the fact that the grass that was there is probably just dried up a little bit. Had a firm sprinkle at the end of the evening yesterday and uh, about two or three hours of rolling today so they've tried to make sure they keep this pitch as hard and as fresh as possible when I look at it it is dry and maybe a little bit of darkness to it and that would have been from the water that went on it last night but all in all when I look at this pitch it doesn't really fill me with the confidence to come and bat first here the two teams that have batted first in the first couple of games have gone on and won but today when I look at the surface I think it's going to be a little bit tired I think it'll be a bit slower than we've seen it uh, yesterday evening and I think maybe the captain that to wins the toss today will elect a ball first. Okay, Dr. Tino, thanks very much for that. <laughs> uh, now, right, what about that? The pitch, what are your thoughts about it? Seems like the spinners are going to play another big role today. Looks like it's going to be a little bit slower today. Well, the spinners will turn it on any surface, the Afghanistan spinners. So I think any pitch Rashi Khan turns up on, he will turn the ball. For me, 
more evident will be the, if the ball seems. Last night we saw the ball seem. Market there seemed the ball. Josh Little actually got a couple of balls to seem as well. So I don't think it's going to be too much di too different than last evening. Last evening I thought the pitch played really well. It skidded on nicely. 150 odd in the first innings were very good. And also was some swing around the places also, also yeah. for well, Josh Little it's in particular. Quite sticky. It's quite sticky again tonight. So I think the ball will shape. Okay, and we've seen that uh, throughout this uh, tour, the, the white ball games uh, in the one-day series as well. Right, uh, let's find out what happened to the toss with Andrew Leonard and the skippers. It's time for the decider here in the T20i series, one apiece. The winner tonight will take it all. It's Afghanistan versus Ireland for one last time on this tour. Rashid Khan alongside Paul Sterling and the ICC match referee, David Boone. Rashid, you've got the coin. Tails. Tails oh, the is the call. And it is a head. <laughs> Rashid, you won the toss. What are you going to do, please, and why? I would like to bat first. I think it's a used wicket, and uh, maybe in the fourth innings, spin more a bit, and uh, yeah, we just want to bat first. Are you doing that because of the strength of your spin attack? It's been so dominant throughout this series. Definitely, that is a kind of uh, a reason as well. We have the strength, uh, which is spin attack, and, and also I think this wicket is uh the second game on it and we know that on the fourth innings how it's going to be and uh i think that's the kind of mindset we have that yes we're going to bat first and then just uh, let what what we do in the second innings you had brilliant individual performances from yourself from Mohammed nabi and karote early in his international career would you like a bit more from the rest of the team definitely i think you know t20 is all about like you know two three players step up and uh, they contribute and they win the game for you but uh, the rest of the players they just try their best to to, to uh, help them and support them as much as possible but you know everyone is trying their best giving 100% that's what something which matters to me it's not about the result what come out but it's more about the uh, the effort they put in the field and that's something which i love the most and everyone is contributing even if it's a single uh, run they save in the boundary that is something which contribute for the team so yeah happy with everyone with their performance and uh, happy with the senior Nabi stepping up and, and contributing. Just finally, any, any team changes? Uh, we go with the same side. Rashid, best of luck. You. Nice to see you. Okay, Rashid Thank Khan you. choosing to have a bat first. Paul, what would you have done? I, I suspect you might have bowled. No, I think I would have had a hit. Um, seems to be the winning formula at the minute here in the last couple of days. So uh, we're getting out there in the field and we'll, we've been bowling really well up top um, for the first few games. How good is it for Irish cricket? This rivalry seems to have been reborn in a big way on this tour. Yeah, it's always great games against Afghanistan. Uh, I think every player wants to play in a serious decider, and it doesn't get much bigger than this. First debut as captain, you made history by winning an overseas tour in this format against a test nation. You could make it back to back here against Afghanistan. How much would that mean? I think it just means a lot to win a series. You know, uh, result isn't necessarily the end game here with what we've got coming up, but it would be a great start to what our process and our, our build up to the World Cup would be. So looking forward to another okay. good game. Finally, any team news? No. Same team. Thanks, Gerald. Thank you. OK, that's the news from down here in the middle for the final time. Afghanistan have won the toss. They're going to have a bat first. OK, so both teams pretty settled. Afghanistan for that? Well, uh, good thing is Afghanistan have decided to bat first. Rahmanullah Gorbas prefers to bat first. He needs runs. He's played a great ODI series before that. Sidi Qatal was good in the second T20. Uh, uh, Asmatullah needs his form back. Nabi has been in supreme touch. But the Afghanistan Pacers need to do better than the previous game, particularly Fazal Farooqi needs to bowl in the proper areas, yoker length and proper lengths. Rashid Khan's been amazing, seven wickets to him, so it looks quite a nice side. Nile, Ireland. Yes, also unchanged, so Paul Sterling sticking to what he likes to do. Balburnie's been in good form. Paul Sterling actually has been an excellent touch, but for the bowling, that's where the key is right up front. With that new ball, Josh Little, Mark Adair and Barry McCarthy will cause Afghanistan some problems. Delaney and Ben White will do the bulk of the spin bowling. They need runs out of Dockrell, Camper and Lorca Tucker. Those three batters need to score and step up tonight. And now, just very quickly, all four white ball games will be won by the teams that have been batting first so far. Yeah, it's a good like it's a good surface, and when you've got runs on the board and you've got spin bowlers and quality spin bowlers, that's what you want. Get runs on the board and then put put the squeeze on the second time round. I think it's a great toss for Rashid Khan to win, especially after last night, because Ireland are going to be going out chasing, going. Listen, we haven't played the spin bowling well. We've lost 12 wickets to spin in two games. It's not going to get any easier. Okay, so that's uh, surely advantage to Afghanistan uh, right at the start. Uh, Brian Murgatroyd, before uh, we got on there, caught up with the Ireland coach and had a bit of a chat to him about this big game. Heinrich, thank you very much indeed for joining us. What's the mood in the squad like, given the significance of tonight's match? Yeah, look, no, we're really excited about the game tonight. 
I think if you go back a couple of weeks and said to us, you know, we'll come out here and um, you know play some good Test cricket first and foremost, start of the tour, and then be one up in uh, one all up in the uh, in the T20, and with the t decider tonight, we'd uh, take that happily. Are you scratching your head a little bit about what happened last night, given you dominated both power plays and still couldn't quite get across the line? Yeah, look, we played some good cricket at stages, um, but we also know that they're a really good side. And um, again, when their spinners come on through the middle period, it was obviously quite tough for us. And hopefully the reflection we did last night and then a bit of work we've done behind the scenes today put us in a good position tonight. What have you learned from these white ball matches, given that it's World Cup year? Yeah, I, I guess for us it's exactly that, you know, working towards that World Cup. And look, we've got about 10 fixtures from the start of this series and we're hopefully going to try out a couple of combinations as we go and make sure that, you know, we leave no stone unturned. Now, decisions have gone against you at times uh, on this tour. It's caused frustrations. How do you ensure that produces positivity tonight rather than a sort of woe is me feeling among the players? Yeah, look, I guess one of the key things we've spoken about this whole trip is ensuring that, you know, we control the things we can control. And look, the umpire decisions are out of our control. So, you know, if we can control the way we play and then look after our own skill sets, then hopefully that puts us in a good position. No dew last night. Is the toss going to be significant, do you think? Yeah, look, it's been obviously this whole series and, and, and even in the ODIs. But look, I think they sprayed the grass and, um, you know, dew didn't play any part last night. So I, I think they did that again today. Heinrich, thanks so much for your time this evening. Good luck tonight. Cheers, guys. Heinrich and Brian, thanks very much. Uh, for today, uh, one player that's been missing so far for you guys, who's a very fine cricketer, is Amazai. Um, yeah, I think it's a little bit strange to see him not being able to read Josh Little. Probably he's got his number in in-swinger first, in out-swinger the second game. In Sri Lanka series, he got out to Pati Rana. That what I remember, having been bowled out for Duck. He just needs to come back strong. He's a strong character. I'm sure he'll be able to turn things differently and they are needed from him today, the fact that Afghanistan is batting first. And one thing that Ireland will have in their favour, Niall, is that they've uh, picked up their first wicket for 15 or less in each of the last five T20 internationals against uh, four nation teams. Well, Ireland have dominated the power plays, Hazy, both games with bat and ball, and they've also dominated the back end of the innings. So this power play, yes, is going to be crucial, but it's the middle phase for Ireland. But it's a cracking game, Hazy. It really is set up beautifully. The ground's in great nick. The crowd are coming through the turnstiles. We couldn't ask for anything more on our last day here in Sharjah. Niall, Fadai, thanks very much for your thoughts. Yep, we are set for uh, a terrific game. Let's go upstairs and join our commentators. Take it away, boys. Good evening and welcome to the Sharjah Cricket Ground. Paul Sterling lost the toss today to his side in the field first up. They'll have to chase in order to win this series. Siduk Atal so far in this series 1 and 35. Still very much a fledgling career. And at the other end, a man who desperately needs a score this evening. He's gone from huge success in the One Day Internationals to next to nothing in these T20Is. Scores of naught, that was a first baller, and three so far. What can he produce this evening? That best of 100 on this ground in 52 balls against the UAE in December. And first up, he'll be against Mark Adair from the pavilion end. Mark Adair in terrific form. He really has bowled beautifully in this series. One for 26 and three for 27. Last, no, eight, half, six, five, salud. Let's go. Straight away, Gerbas underway. Got Tino and Devendra alongside me. Good evening to you both, gentlemen. How do you see things? Very good evening. To both of you two as well, and good evening to whoever is uh, tuning in to this final and what should be exciting t20 international looking forward to it i think this man as you've said he's due a score and i think if he can put something decent on the board then afghanistan can get a good total here
Devendra, it was an incredible win last night for Afghanistan after being 14 for four. Yeah, it's going to be very exciting. The things uh, unfolded slightly differently in the previous game, losing four wickets early, then recovering remarkably well to get to a competitive score and then brilliant bowling from Nabi. Uh, controlling the game, Rashid Khan taking wickets and Karote was brilliant once again. Round the wicket, Adair. And Atal off the mark. And this is how yesterday went. Afghanistan winning the toss, batting first. 152 for nine, but it was after a disastrous start. Four for 14 at one stage. And it was Nabi and Atal with a 60 partnership that got them to that 152. And as we've seen, when you get 145 here, it's difficult for the team chasing. Ireland losing by 10. But a wonderful contribution from Delaney. Now, extras. No excitement at all from the island uh, fielders. Throw at the stumps from Harry Tector. As you can see, Gurbas comfortably in. Good intent from the batsmen early on in the first over. A comfortable batting first Afghan batters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're definitely right, Devender. There's been some good busyness about these Afghan batters in this first over. But they haven't done anything extravagant, have they? They've just knocked the ball around into gaps. And look at that, they're eight without loss already. Positivity in execution of the strokes, looking to hit the gaps. Take those singles, twos. That's well bowled from Adair. Good comeback from him at the back end of the over. Afghanistan winning the toss, deciding to bat. They're eight without loss. Both sides unchanged this evening for this decider. Josh Little. Five wickets in the two matches so far. He's bowled beautifully. He managed to swing the ball around. Got 35 yesterday. Natal in 32 balls. One massive six. And that was to the spinner over Carl Corner. And then two boundaries. So he accumulated more than really getting after the Irish bowlers. Then again, given the context of that innings from 14 for four, that was actually a very valuable innings, wasn't it? Yeah, in construction of that innings, it was important that he was there. Jonathan Trott earlier today, assessing the pitch conditions. Same pitch as was played on last night. Pitch six on this square. 
with the relayed surfaces from the middle of last year. Three dot deliveries, he's getting the ball to move as well, little in his first over. Tino, third man and fine leg up in the circle early on. We've seen the third man up quite often in the T20s early on. And what they've opted for is to have backward square point and a square on the leg side. Oh, and just over the head of the man at deep backward point. Gareth Delaney was down there. It's gone all the way for six. Wasn't off the middle of the bat, though. Far from it. Now, if that third man had been back, this probably would have had him having to go six metres to his left and taking the catch. Delaney thought about it. Delaney couldn't get to it. Not many others in this Ireland team would have been... Josh Little's taken a wicket in his first over in the previous two matches. Very nearly a wicket with that last delivery and indeed the delivery before. Coming back to the two fields men at point and men at the square leg position because he likes to play the pull shot and a good cutter of the cricket ball as well. Just feeling for the delivery once again rooted to the crease. Gerbaz almost committed too much there at the non-striker's end. The end of the over, just that six from it. Afghanistan 14 without loss. in case you've just joined us Afghanistan unchanged this evening as indeed our island This is a Firebird production for the Afghanistan Cricket Board. It's been a pleasure to bring you uh, all the action here from not only Abu Dhabi, but also Sharjah, a test match in Abu Dhabi, and then the six white ball games here in Sharjah. Out. What a good catch. Tector, he's like a magnet for the ball in the field. And it's another failure for Gurbaz. Wasn't off the middle of the bat. He tried to be extravagant, did Ramanullah Gurbas, and it was his undoing. I think the option was right. He's trying to go up and over the bowler. Gave himself a bit of room. Gave himself a bit too much room, actually. In the end, the ball coming off the toe end of the bat. You don't want to give Harry Tector an opportunity to take a catch. Ramanilla Gurbas goes, but only after some afters with the island team. A little bit of a chat between uh, all and sundry there, but he's on his way back to the pavilion now. Out for six, Afghanistan 14 for one.
Ibrahim Zadran in at number three. So Afghanistan's opening partnerships in this series, Nort six and now 14. That's four. Ibrahim Zadran off the mark straight away. Third man up in the circle and deep point, very square. Width given. Slightly short, just waiting for ball to come, then just opening the face of the bat and gliding it to the third man boundary for four. Off the mark with a boundary. This is the wicket of Gurbaz. Good catch diving to his right. Harry Tekta got such a safe pair of hands. Mark Adair's enjoyed it. Yet another wicket for him in the series. And it was just a bit of a discussion. He wasn't happy, Ramanullah Gurbaz. He's failed in all three matches in the innings. And he wasn't happy with a few words that were said to him, I'm sure, by the Irish fielders. It's naught, three and six. It's been spicy the last few games, that's for sure. We've said it on numerous occasions in this series that the rivalry between Afghanistan and Ireland is a fierce one. And that was another reflection of it. Yeah, and those numbers that you've just rolled off won't help. That's where the frustration is and Gurbaz giving a response probably to just a few words that would have been said in the air. Well, that's a beauty from Mark Adair to end the over. Afghanistan 19 for one. Little second over. I have a shout for that. I rather fancy that pitched outside leg stump. Josh Little doesn't necessarily agree. Yeah, I'll agree with you. I think that's swung and it's pitched outside the line of the leg stump and missing the stumps. But when do bowlers ever think that it's pitched outside the leg stump, Brian? Not often. Yes, that was definitely doing too much as well. He's missed out. He's missed out. Harry Tector catch this evening. That's six catches for him in this series now. He took four in game one, one last night, another one tonight. He really is outstanding in the field to go with his batting and his occasional off spin too. He's your all round cricketer, isn't he? He's been handy with the ball as well in the last 12 or so months. And white ball cricket. And he's offering something with everything. Certainly strikes you as uh, a future leader of this island side. Very calm. You won't have to worry about the contributions that he makes to the team. Level headed.
right off the splice of the bat, that one, and probably just as well. Seen some examples of indifferent bounce already. Urba is not quite getting up to ending it. Fine catch taken. Running around. Tech to captain Ireland under 19s at the 2018 ICC under 19 Cricket World Cup. He's feeling for a delivery outside the option. Just a single from this over so far. Interesting thing happened at the toss about understanding the patterns. Too far outside the opposite. Understanding the patterns. Rashid Khan studied it well. Paul is telling, kept telling, tail, tail, tail. And he made sure they tossed the coin in a way that came as a head. Afghanistan winning the toss. Oh, goodness me. Ibrahim Zadran dropping his bat at the non striker's end. Thankfully, he didn't need to uh, get it over the line. Comfortable single, four gone. Afghanistan 21 for one. you're just joining us Afghanistan won the toss elected to bat first both teams wanted to do that by the way 21 for one after four at this stage going at 5.25 McCarthy into the attack now that's nicely picked up that's a fine shot first ball of the over and that's gone for six first ball of his spell I oh, love seeing a left-hander in full flight Mentioned in the previous couple of games, the long levers that this left-hander possesses. Look at the pickup. Really does pick that bat up with vengeance. He gets plenty of energy through the ball. Not a big boundary here in Sharjah. Just 70 yards, but that's gone 20, 30 yards further. Fadai, how are you, sir? I am feeling very good, sir, being alongside you and Hazy. We're good to be in the decider. This is the decider. Ireland winning the first, Afghanistan winning the second. What a game that was. Finally winning it by the margin of only 10 runs. And here we are for the last one. They're looking for the new ball maybe because Siddiq Atal hit it so firmly. I believe it was hit out of the park, was it? He's dealing only in sixes. This is the second that he's already hit. Yeah, it's probably got a puncture in it, that one. Get it that hard right out of the screws pick the bones out of that he just picks his hands up beautifully I just love how he picks his hands up hazy picks it up as if he's trying to hit boundaries you see some batters that are just picking the bat up not with that kind of energy but it looks like when he picks the bat up he's trying to hit balls for four or six beautiful swing see we've seen a lot so far in this uh, game the third and final game the final game of the tour the decider in this T20 international series. Seen a bit of aggression, seen some playing and missing. And we've seen a six first ball of McCarthy. Abraham played uh, a beautiful shot, first ball he faced, just ran it down to third man for four. Something in the water in Sharjah, I reckon, between these two sides. Been good energy between both sets of players. Neither side giving an inch, sometimes it's boiled over a little bit as we saw when Gerbaz was out but there is passion and that's what you want to see leading into the World Cup still spots up for grabs you feel in both sides I wonder how much of the uh, aggression that was towards Gerbaz I mean he threw his bat up in the air which is never a great sight for starters but uh, he also just stood on a length when he did that that's cracked away it's going to be only one uh, if I'm playing against a side that's got a lot of spinners and they're going to be bowling last on this track, I don't want to see a batsman, an opening batsman, just mess around and uh, stand on a length and wait for the bat to come down and move his uh, feet around with some spikes. 
I wonder if that was perhaps the cause of the boys getting upset from Ireland. Yeah, just have a look at this maximum by Atal, how he picks the hand up and just swats it away. Really nice. A bit like Owen Morgan when he was in his pomp, Owen Morgan, how he picked the, the bat up and picked his hands up, and launched the ball long and far over that square leg region. Seven off the over, three balls halfway through his first, McCarthy. Needs to work hard now for that uh, terrific shot first up. Power play so important. We spoke in the build-up how uh, Ireland in their last five T20 internationals have lost a wicket inside 15 runs. Well, it's now six in a row. 14 when that first wicket went down. Afghanistan. Ireland taking the wicket. A, a good point. They've been amazing. Their pacers have been okay. just doing an amazing job, Hazy. You called that, absolutely. And once again, it was on 14 when the first wicket fell. To the frustration of Rahmanullah Gurbaz, but Ireland had done the job. Yeah, to confirm that, that's Ireland uh, getting an early wicket inside 15 runs. It's nicely punched. Just to me, Hazy looking on it. The surface looks like it's still got a nice bit of pace in it. The ball seems to be skidding on nicely. The number of balls that have hit. I'm not going to say high in the bat, but really come onto the bat nicely. It was his second game on this surface, but I think it looks a really good pitch. Last night I thought it played really well. It did, but I, I mean, the ball's hard, so it should do that. Previous two games, Afghanistan lost three and four wickets inside the power play. So they'll be happy with the result. They've only lost one, another one or and one ball to negotiate. It's a good comeback after that first six. It's well done for McCarthy in the end. It is going to be expensive. All the same. Ten off his first. Five gone. 31 for one. Some thinking for the Irish skipper to do. Would we see a spinner being introduced inside the power play? Afghanistan are cruising nicely. 31 for the loss of only one wicket inside first five overs. There's one ball to go in the power play. We're only two men allowed outside the circle, so uh, batsmen like to go airborne and score runs. Gabaz is one of those guys who does that, but he's uh, been missing in this T20 International Series. The other thing, Afghanistan don't want to be in anywhere near where they were when they started batting yesterday. And they were losing wickets all over the place, so they've been a little bit more circumspect, I suppose. So they're going to be behind the eight ball a bit when the power play's up. And Curtis Comfort into the attack in the power play only bowled two overs in the last game slightly surprised to see him in the power play nicely bowled from Camphor I just want to go back and look at, uh, ask the VT department to have a look at where uh, Gavaz was actually standing when he threw the ball up. Oh, he's on length, right on length. The spinner's going to be initially, then he uh, damages the front of his bat, and Joss Little uh, gets pumped up and doesn't say too much. And then he turns around and has another word now. This stage it's all looking okay, then it gets a little bit more aggressive after this actually. Someone makes some comment, which I didn't like. I mean, there, Manuela Gurba says he doesn't look happy. The way he's sitting can tell you he is not a happy man. And who would enjoy being uh, on the receiving end? I mean, no one in like a Commodore. And this happens, this legend and things happen in the cricket. Kind of get into the skin and say things you want. I mean, you can express. Manuela Gurba is a dangerous player. Now that's gone high, should be taken. It's gone a long way up, oh, he misjudged that and he's put it down, Delaney, put it down. Had to go forward very quickly at the end, dropped pretty quickly against that uh, black sky. Well, that's a really poor miss. Early in the inning, had an opportunity, but this was a fairly routine catch. Camphor 
into the attack. Ibrahim high into the night sky. Plenty of time to settle underneath. He never made the ground. He never made the yardage. Have a look here. Last minute lunges forward to try and catch it right now. He realizes I'm in the wrong position. Puts down a routine chance. That's a nice shot for none. Well, it's not his night, I believe. When in Josh Little's over, that first maximum, he was not standing right by the edge. Yeah, it was Sidi Qatar who hit that maximum, but you could tell he could have well taken it. But then this one, he had all the time. Just couldn't put himself into the right position. You need to bring yourself as close to the ball you can and then pouch it nicely. Two drops, I believe. This one's been connected and connected nicely. That's maximum Ibrahim Zadran. Delhi is not going to like it. 41 for one at the end of power play. So the run rate at 6.83 in the power play. Most sides like to be around about the 50 mark when the power play is done. So they are a little bit short of that, but it's not a major concern. One of those reasons is the fact that we know that that uh, figure of 145 is such an important figure. So it's not a particularly high scoring ground. Average score batting first here is just a shade under the one five zero. That's the end of the power play. Nice shot, last ball. Beautiful timing. Lovely swing of the blade. Effortless, really. Look at the power. Tall man, long levers. Pumps it over squarely. That's a beautiful shot. Having a bit of insult to injury. And now the leg spinner, Gareth Delaney, who's had a difficult first six overs in the field. Gets the chance with ball in hand. He gets a chance to redeem himself. Oh, what a night he had. Now, this has been a start of the game for Afghanistan. Third one. This is where we thought Delany could have taken this. A bit tough on him. Rahmanullah Gorbas couldn't connect that. The first breakthrough. Ireland once again inside 15 runs. Getting that breakthrough. Sidi Khadal hit that nicely and out of the park. That was a chance you could tell Afghanistan could have well been two down. But Delany dropped that. It was high in the skies but couldn't fall into the same hand safely. And right after that, a maximum insult to injury. That's been a good power play for Afghanistan. 41 inside those six overs with the loss of one wicket. Ibrahim Zadran, 18 off 14 deliveries, 1-4-1-6. Looking to be more aggressive today, which is uh, a good sign. He's a good player, good technician, Ibrahim Zadran. Zadran. Now spin, introduced for the first time, as normally happens when a power player is done. Yeah, leg spinner up against left-hander here. Sadiq Atal, surely thinking that leg side boundary. Just a 70-yard hit. Slog sweep is on. First power play, you would say, in the whole series that Afghanistan have won, Hazy, both whilst batting and bowling. So that's a massive, a massive plus point in the deciding game. Yeah, won it by uh, only losing the one wicket, I guess. Surprisingly deep. Enabled them to get through to uh, one, and now they've doubled up, and that's sloppy. Too deep in the field for starters, and then overthrow. I'm not going to tell you who the fielder is, okay? You guys can just guess it. He's not having a good day out there. The throw was onto his hand. Ben White throws it to Delany's end, and I think he was just a bit sloppy. Maybe wanted to just brought it back onto the stumps, cost an extra runs. It's not a big turn of the ball, Delaney, so we're not going to be able to tell too much about uh, this pitch. 
at the moment because the ball is pretty much just skidding at this stage. But I think it will start to turn later on. Certainly bowling wide. They'll just keep an eye on Sadiq Atala's footwork. He's going across his stumps and Delaney's just pushing it wider and wider. So there's a little bit of mind games between batter and bowler here. Delaney doesn't want to go anywhere near the stumps because it brings that slog sweep into the game. Oh, he's just hit it straight back to the bowler. That really is a soft dismissal, and he knows it as well. That look is telling a story. Well, that'll give a lot of comfort to Delaney off his own bowling. Takes a return catch. It's not always easy to take a return catch, but with the pace that he came back to the hands of Delaney, that will give him some confidence. That was a googly. Sadiq Atal not able to read it nicely and just pouches a very easy return catch. You will tell he's just given away his wicket. Sadiq Atal looked, ni looked good until 19 that he made, but catch and ball, Delaney, that's good. 45 for two for Afghanistan. Afghanistan supporters, hold your breath. A Mazai has arrived in at number four. Four first ballers in the last six T20 internationals. Hold your breath. I have a good feeling about this one, though. Well, the good thing is, Hayes, he's up against a spinner, and he's not up against Josh Little. He's a very fine player, but when you're in the mindset of a lack of runs, the footwork doesn't quite work, and Paul Sterling knows it. He's got a slip in play. The other thing, I, I guess he can only improve. Well, he already has. The first ball's been done. Things have changed. Now, that was pretty ordinary. Sadiq Atal, he knew it. Got to stand supporters, breathe. We're OK. He's going to be good today. Amazai is a good player. That dismissal of Sadiq Atal, he looked at the surface, and there's, I don't understand how he can look at the surface almost in dismay. It's the same pitch as yesterday. It's the same ground as we've been at for the last week to 10 days for the white ball cricket. It's at the back of the hand. You haven't picked it. You simply haven't picked the googly. Nothing to do with the surface. <laughs> Nice work from Delaney, he's picked up a wicket and conceded only five runs. 46 for two. Kabaz gone for six. Atal just gone for 19. Shaq, who played uh, nicely two games ago, got 32 a couple of games ago, played well. Is due to come in next. And the saviour from uh, yesterday after that, Mohamed Nabi, who played uh, beautifully. 59 himself and involved in a, a big stand of 70 plus. Stayubi. Oh, well bowled. He'll be holding his. Doing these private tournaments, he'll be holding Kabul Premier League, so yeah. That's well bowled. Camper went for six, the very first ball he bowled in that uh, last over. So he's got to make sure this is a good one. He's got to play catch up here in this over. 
Now that's gone high. This will be a very fine catch if it's taken. Got two hands to it, I think. Couldn't quite grab it. So another chance. It would have been a brilliant catch had it been uh, snaffled, but it's gone down. <laughs> it's not Delaney, is it? So, but that was a tough one. That was really a tough one. He had to run back. Asmatullah Omar Zai trying to just open his arms. He's looking for that shot to... I just wonder could Ben White have helped his team out out there? Yes. Charging in. Much easier when you're coming in from the boundary. I know you haven't got much time when the ball is up there, but there is a moment when Ben White would have realised Gareth Delaney's had a difficult night under a couple of high balls already. Can I help my teammate out and come in from the deep third boundary? He should have been screaming, mine, I've got this. He has to put the brakes on right at the end, Ben White. It's such a difficult catch for Gareth Delaney. The previous catch was a routine catch. That is a very difficult catch. For Ben White, that's a much easier catch. Ben White charging in, should be commanding that ball, as you say, Mike Hazeman. But I think it's, it's good they didn't collide with one another. That's again in the air, but that'll fall into the hands safely. Josh Little takes the catch. So that doesn't cost him a lot. Well, Josh Little hasn't gotten Ibrahim or Omar Zai out, I beg your pardon, but he's caught him. Big, big moment here. Excellent from Camphor. He's just hammering a length. And Omar Zai trying to hit his way out of a lack of form. This is a very good catch. Josh Little commands the area, dominates the ball, pouches safely. Game is heating up nicely. Omar Zai goes for three, 48 for three. Top over this one so far, only a couple of runs and a wicket as well. It means that uh, Ishak, Mohammed Ishak has arrived now, number five, with a job to do, with a proper job to do here. They need to get things back on track, Afghanistan. It's going to be a wide. Yeah, Ishaq Rahimi into his fourth match, 48 runs to him. With a strike rate of 160, he came in the pressure situation. But that's how Asmatullah Omar Zai not able to read the pace of Camphor going a little early on the shot. But what a catch that is from Josh Little. What a player he is for Ireland. He's really been a gem of a player. He bowls nicely, nips bell. This time around, he got him caught if he couldn't get him bowled as Nile earlier called that and called it rightly. Asmatullah Omar Zai is looking for form. But Muhammad Ishaq Rahimi came under pressure situation and he had five consecutive fours in the first T20. So the mentality and the mindset is absolutely wonderful, but he has to do the build-up. Some uh, deliveries hit in the air, hit high in the air. It's a fine grab. They did a lot of practice in both these teams, actually, before uh, today about catching those... Uh, High hits going over their shoulders. Good stuff from Little. Single to round off a very good over. Eight gone, 51 for three. Fifty-one for three then.
Ben White into the attack. And starts with a real drag down, and Curtis Camper can't cut it off. It's just skidded off the surface in the deep. And Ibrahim cashes in on a pretty friendly loosener. There's Brian Murgatroyd and Devender Kumar join me. Half tracker. Oh, goodness me, it was hit hard. It's been a good fight back this by Ireland though. Afghanistan will have felt reasonably content at the end of that power play. That best for Ben White in game one when he was player of the match. And it's interesting as well to see the rag is out. So in contrast to last night, we are seeing some dew here this evening. Just wonder how significant that's going to be in the second half of this match because of course a lot's been made of the fact that Afghanistan spinners have had the Indian sign over the Ireland batters in this series so far 12 wickets for 95 in the two matches up to this point will that effectiveness be blunted this evening by the dew yeah, it's certainly something that Paul Sterling didn't shy away from as you see a horrible mix-up yet another misfield from Gareth Delaney he's having a bit of a nightmare out there to be honest two if not maybe three drop catches one of them very difficult yes and a couple of fumbles to go alongside it here but again another indication maybe of a slightly slippery ball Sterling doesn't tend to shy away from things it's very refreshing to hear him in the way in which he speaks in the post matches, he says they have to find a way to combat the Afghan spinners. That's where the spell from the fast bowlers will be crucial. From Afghanistan perspective, getting early wickets, then the spinners will come along. They have the experience. Rashid Khan has a lot of experience of bowling with the wet ball as well during the IPL matches. Smacked away. Goodness me, that was awkward for Tector. It was hit like an absolute rocket down the ground. Tector's wondering to himself there, could he have come in another pace or two and tried to catch that? But it was hit with such venom, such force. It got to him so quickly, he barely had time to adjust. End of the over, 59 for three. Change of bowling at the Sharjah club end. Barry McCarthy back into the attack. He was harshly dealt with early on in his solitary over thus far. What can he do now? Two is the call. And a slip at the far end. Goodness me, it's all happening out there. Balls ricocheting around like a pinball. Well, the fielding hasn't been good today. Catch is going down, overthrows as well. He's twisting his, his angle in the process. Maybe watching whether the other field misses too or not. But Dew will certainly play a part. And Afghanistan will have to think about that aspect. They need at least 155, 160 on the board. It was interesting to see where Ishak was running there. He was just running on the slightly greener area between the two strips. And I have to say, maybe it might be a better course for a batter just to run on the old strip. Let me have a look now. So he's running on the greenish area. Just get off the strip. There's a very bare strip to uh, one side. That might be the way to go. 
You can see on the right there, it's a very bare area. There's no grass on that at all. Excellent delivery. Looking to attack these terms. With the scramble seam. They've been attacking batsmen. They've been given freedom from the captain to play attacking brand of cricket. New players coming in the side. A clear instruction from the captain to play aggressively. And that's the demand of the format as well. Nabi to come, Rashid to come. Another misfield. It's Tom George Dockrell going to his weaker side, yes. One of the biggest factors tonight that you might not immediately think of is the back-to-back -back nature of these T20Is. Having a chat to players in both camps as we get a look at Dockrell's slight fumble, not easy. The intensity of the modern T20 game, mount it zaps out of you. Probably will have only got back to their team hotels at 1am last night, maybe even after that. And then you've got all the adrenaline from the match, you might not be able to sleep till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Can Ireland keep battling against that fatigue? Good work from Dockrell, that's to his stronger side, the left hand. And also noticeable that Harry Tector has had, well, I think, what is a permanent shift of position. He was certainly for the first 18 to 24 months of his international career, always a backward point, such a fine athlete. But he seems to have found a real home for himself at long off and long on. Taken some excellent catches in this series. Leading fielder in it thus far. Barry McCarthy, who didn't have the best of times at backward point because he's bowling, it means that Dockrell now is in that prime position. Really good over from McCarthy, just four runs from it. We're at the halfway stage of Afghanistan's effort. Ten overs gone, they're 63 for three, and let's take a drink.
So in this deciding T20 international, Afghanistan winning the toss, deciding to bat. Let's have a look at the three wickets to have gone down so far. Ramanilla Gurbas, another failure for him. Nought, three and six in this series. Great catch by Tector. Caught and bowled for Delaney, who's had uh, an otherwise difficult time in the field. And then how about this for a catch by Josh Little to get rid of Omar Zai. Terrific running effort, that. Six bowlers used so far. Mix of uh, spin and pace. Ben White. It's interesting, just before drinks was taken, we were chatting about the fact that Afghanistan have got quite a few inexperienced players in their lineup. Ireland, by contrast, lots of experience and a very settled side as well. It's interesting that these two sides have taken such a differing approach in a T20 World Cup year. Yeah, hugely settled right now, the Irish side. In fact, to the extent, Brian, that I'd make the case that I would be really surprised if it's a different 15 that end up going to the T20 World Cup in about two months' time for Ireland. They do have more games to come. The talk is a home series against Pakistan and then a triangular against their old rivals, Scotland and the Netherlands, later in May. But unless somebody does something extraordinary on the Ireland Wolves tour to Nepal that will follow this starting next week. Flog down the ground, one bounce for four. It was unorthodox from Mishak, but very effective. He is an aggressive player. They are searching for that wicketkeeper role who can finish the innings as well, down the order. Good audition for him, giving opportunity in this tournament. Audition for Ishaq. Najibullah is there and there about always. We're thinking about identifying one or two talents getting into the ICC T20 World Cup. It's amazing you think there's no Gulbadeen in this side, for example. Just a, a couple of months ago, he was playing a blockbuster innings against India in India in a T20 international. Well, they know the main resources that they might utilize in the World Cup. So that's why still around two months to go. Shpagiza to be played in Afghanistan. That's going to be great experience getting into the groove, identifying the form of the place as well. And that's why there is a conscious effort to blood or give opportunity to one to two players who can bring about change, can bring a refreshing approach to the way they bat or bowl or field. 11 overs gone, it's 70 for three. In the interest of that, what Devender's saying there, Brian, is such a differing approach. They're maybe trying to find one or two to get into that 15. They probably know what Najibullah can do, what Hazratullah Zazai can do, what Gulbadi Naib can do. For Ireland, really, unless somebody, maybe a Gavin Hoey or somebody could burst into the reckoning from Nepal. I would strongly suspect the 15 we have here in the UAE, again, injury pending. It could end up being the 15 that will go to that T20 World Cup. A great opportunity, I think, for both these sides to get through to that Super 8 there. I think one area that they're targeting at the moment, the opening combination, Siddiq Latter, the left-hand batsman, Gurbaz, right in batsman. Normally, Ibrahim and Gurba, Gurbaz open the batting. So the thinking about right, finding a right and left in combination at the top of the order, a player down the order as well in finishing role. Cam for hearing after it. Are they going to go for a second? Yes, they are. He produced a dramatic run out last night of his own bowling in exactly the same style as that. Couldn't quite manage it this time. Well, a little bit of deja vu, wasn't it? Let's get a quick look at those T20 World Cup groups. For Ireland, they'll be 
based in America. They'll have the challenge of not just one of the co-hosts, USA and Canada, who'll kick the tournament off in Texas, but also India and Pakistan. Fixtures fall nicely, though. They could end up setting up a position if the games go to the rankings where they'd need to beat Pakistan in the final game to get to the Super 8, whereas down in the Caribbean, the two big rivals for Afghanistan, going to be the, one of the other co-hosts, the West Indies, and then New Zealand. You'd expect Afghanistan to beat Papua New Guinea and Uganda with due respect to both of those sides, who are two great stories and will light up the tournament. But I think both sides genuinely have realistic hopes of a Super 8 spot. Yeah, I'm fascinated by the idea of Afghanistan continuing to experiment here because on the other side of the coin, I know some sides like to take the completely opposite approach to that. And by that I mean get players into the positions that they're going to be using during the T20 World Cup and get them familiar with those roles. Obviously that doesn't seem to be something that Afghanistan are particularly worried about. Well, it's still a long way to go. Around two months to go, injuries can happen. At the same time, that was brilliant, running between the wicket, between the two batsmen. Also, Shpag is to come, the domestic tournament, a highly competitive tournament. The level of competition is better than most of the T20 domestic tournaments across the globe, including India, Australia, South Africa as well. Yeah, that's Pagiz as well timed, isn't it, next month for maybe the last late surges for someone in Afghan domestic cricket. But it is interesting, Brian, isn't it? it Afghanistan are usually so focused on winning every game they play. But now they're almost taking a more pragmatic approach. Rashid Khan even said to me at the toss, we're not as focused on winning or losing, shades of what Daryl Mitchell said after the test match. Great Kiwi batter against Australia, focused on the process. It's a bit of a current buzzword, isn't it? Losing is the new winning. <laughs> Moral victories, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Seven players participating in IPL. Works through the onside. We will have the game time. Shabak is to come. A lot of cricket to be played. 12 overs have been bowled, 78 for three, Afghanistan. Now this game is poised interestingly now. Look at the economy rate, 6.5 for Adair. He picked up one for 13 off two, so he's done a fine job. Camp has got one for 23 off three. And they're going at six and a half at the moment. They'll want to step it up a little bit, Afghanistan. Brown's played nicely. It's very good work from Ben White. As a spinner, you've got to be superb off your own bowling, and uh, the ground he covers here is very impressive. Good solid shot, punch down the ground, big dive to his left, good stuff. You don't want to turn that strike over. That's picked up, and it's four runs, nicely played. Boundary early in the over is important. Yeah, nicely into his groove here, Ibrahim. White feeling the pressure. Afghanistan playing the spinners much better. Really good shot. Flick of the wrist, he knows exactly where the men are in the deep and just manipulates the ball to perfection. They can't allow these bowlers just to uh, keep going along as they are. Nice wrong and nicely bowled. He gets bounced, White, because he has a high release point. Yep, just letting us all know. <laughs> so done that that was the wrong one. Look at the gap, Hazy. Look at the gap between deep backward square just moving. Now there was, there must have been 110 yards of vacant space. Now they change the field. They put 45 and close that gap. Punching that strong shot down the ground just for one. So this partnership is building. 
35 now off 32. They need to have a big partnership here between these two guys. Nabi in next. Might be out. Has been taken, but it's a no ball. He's overstepped. He didn't realize he might be run out. No. Has to get back on his crease. He didn't get back on his crease. He could have been run out, perhaps. So no ball has been called. Yeah, how costly might this be? Bismillah Jan Shinwari, the on umpire who's picked up that no ball. Well, think back to game one. Think back to game one. Now, where was the first con? That to me is not a no ball. Deja vu, perhaps. It's a freebie, it hasn't been put away. Might have been another situation where it wasn't a no ball and it was caught. Well, game one, Ben White bowled a no ball that, in my opinion, was not a no ball. It definitely wasn't a no ball in game one. Now, have a look. That's touched the ground there. That's it. First contact there. That is not a no ball. Nope, that's not a no ball. It's happened to him twice now. Wicket taken. It's just... It's not the first decision. Uh, that's a difficult call. It's so tight for the naked eye to call that. That's twice now. Yeah, we, uh, catch taken and... Uh, End result of the no ball was called and single on both occasions, just a single after the next delivery. Got that through the inner circle. So interesting over. Nine off it. Should have been a wicket. 13 gone, 87 for three. There's a look at the uh, batsman to come, Nabi, striking 130 in his career, 140, sorry, in his career. That's uh, outstanding work. Then it falls away. Amadzai and uh, Korote Kid. Going at 6.7 at the moment. 87 for three. It's a nice little platform to go from here. 39 is the partnership. Josh Little. He'll want to have a say. Two overs, none for eight. It's been really good. Nine dot balls. He's got high skill, Josh Little. Yeah. Saw the men to come in. They'd want to get Nabi in as quickly as possible and out as quickly as possible. Six point six eight the rate. I reckon they're pretty well placed here. In around that magical one fifty. That's right. In their arc at the moment, Nabi, Rashi, 10 and over against the 150. Ibrahim, once he gets going, Paul Sterling realizing that, going back to one of his trump cards, genuine wicket taker. Josh Little, they need a wicket here, Ireland. Well, they have to go at at least eight and over. They've got to uh, set their stall out for 140. If someone plays really well, they might get close to that 150 mark, which is where they were yesterday. Quick single again, rotating that strike. Important comeback over this from Josh Little. Yeah, that current rate, 6.67, will get them 134. They'll want more than that. Eight to the over will give them 142. They'll be delighted if they can go at tens. But these two just not showing signs of looking to accelerate yet. Nicely clubbed. It's a very good shot indeed. That's gone for four. That's a fine boundary. Yeah, nice stroke. 
Just wondering, Tina Moeo, if one of these is going to go here. Maybe Ibrahim's going to try and bat through if Ishak is going to be the man just to take a bit more of a attacking approach. Let Ibrahim maybe just try and set the innings up and let Ishak really go for broke it. Yeah, I agree with you. And there goes that magical number again, 145. Only twice has that been chased here in Sharjah. That's over the top, strong. Beautifully picked up for four. Back-to-back -back boundaries, good work from Ishak. Yeah. Nile, I think you were right. Ishak's decided that I'm the one who's going to be the aggressor in this partnership now. It's one short of 50 and just 39 balls. A couple of really nicely calculated strokes. Yeah, change of angle for Josh Little. He's going to come around the wicket now. Realises that Ishak likes the angle going across him. well maneuvered very nicely done Ishak has played that superbly 50 stand now 40 balls they've stepped on the gas here yeah nicely done Ibrahim and Ishak keeping a close eye on Ishak this series keeping wickets had a difficult time behind the pegs but with the bat in hand he's got some real ability 11 runs off this over Last ball coming up. Oh, and he's clubbed that as well. That's gone for four. This time it's Zadran who's hit that for a boundary. That is a fine over Afghanistan. 15. Josh Little. Comeback over has been expensive. 102 for three. Big over that, the best over by some distance. So that's uh, going to kick him into the rest of this innings, I would imagine. They've uh, burst through that 50 stand. Oh, that's gone straight up. This should be taken. Sterling will be a good catch. That's a blinder. That is a terrific catch from the captain. Nicely done, Paul Sterling. Really good catcher, Paul Sterling. This is an excellent wicket for Ireland. The partnership was just looking to take the game away. Again, it's at the back of the hand from Ben White. High, and not the first time tonight. High into the dark Sharjah night sky. Sterling didn't have much ground to make. Kept his composure nicely. Protected the elbows. A good hand. Impressive innings. Gone for 27. 102 for four. Crucial breakthrough. Just when Afghanistan were looking to put the foot on the pedal. Partnership of 50 between Ishak and Zadran. And then it brings in the hero of yesterday, Mohammed Nabi, with the bat for Afghanistan, best of 89. Very good strike rate, 140. It's nicely bowled, a little bit of turn. This is an outstanding catch. You've got no idea how good it is. He's just made sure that he's kept his eye on the ball and just run sideways. In the end, taking a very good catch. 
Just keeping themselves in the game here, Argentina, aren't they? Early wicket at 40, and then a couple around the 45 or 48. Just when the game was getting away, 102. Now, what's happening here? Tell you what, this is some series for a bit of emotion, commotion. Yeah, there was a bit of movement behind the side screen or near in front of the side screen. I think that was the issue. That's what uh, Nabi was talking about as, as soon as you that first ball went past the bat. Another look at the uh, fine catch from Sterling. They didn't need to do that, really, I don't think. I know he was trying to uh, force the issue a bit, and I, I guess that's fair enough, but it was a brilliant catch from Paul Sterling. Outstanding work. We've got one of the world's best statisticians with us. I just want to bring in a, something that he's just mentioned to us, and that uh, ball that was called a no ball, that wasn't a no ball, that Ben White balled and bowled uh, previously, and that catch was taken that then wasn't a wicket. It was in the 13th over in this game. And if we go back to the first game, the first T20 International, it was uh, he bowled a delivery which was also called a no ball, which wasn't. And the catch was taken, which should have been a wicket, and it wasn't a wicket. It was also an over number 13. I think you've explained that so well. Rezhnish is all over it. And from the same end, it tells us as well. Unlucky 13, Ben White. We need to get a look at Rezhnish. <laughs> he's, at one of the, he's one of the world's best statsmen. He's been outstanding with the work he's given us throughout this tournament. Go on here, Raj. Thanks, buddy. Don't do yourself a disservice. I reckon myself and Tino, if we tried to explain that, would have made a massive error there. We would have confused ourselves. I think we would have been in trouble, Niall. But yeah, really well done, Raj. Pick that one up. But Muhammad Nabi in the last match was outstanding, of course. Really did pull Afghanistan out of the troughs. 14 for four. He really did come together with a couple of the middle order batsmen to put on a score that in the end was enough. I love the way that he hit the ball down the ground. Just gave himself room to the spinners and it was slightly overpitched. He wasn't uh, shy to go over the bowler's head. Eventually it was his downfall. Good options. So like we're good to go now. That's better. He's moved those blokes and that's out of the middle of the bat. Absolute pet hate of mine. Batters getting... Well, losing concentration by people sitting 120 yards. He, I reckon Ian Bell has great a player as he was. When they put that new stand in at Edgebaston, big towering grandstand, I played a county championship game. There's an old boy sitting about 150 yards in the air. Ian Bell got put off. <laughs> this man was a nice shot. Mark there in the lead. This man must have been oh, 120 yards, top tier at Edgebaston. And Ian Bell, there was only 24 people in the ground. Day two of a county championship, but it was too much for Belly. I tell you who was, uh, in my experience, who was the, I'm not going to say the worst, because I don't think you can say the worst, but he was perhaps the most observant and wanted people moved all left, right and centre and he'd spot the, the bloke who was five rows back to the, and 25 rows to the, to the left, or 25 metres to the left, and that was Sachin Tendulkar. He was quite extraordinary. They'll come back, they'll get back comfortably. Whoa! That's got a few too much power behind it. Curtis Kempfer. The old gun show. Lifting some heavy tin in the gym. Good thing the camera was on a wide angle. Wouldn't have got that in. Good work, Tector. A good thing he didn't throw with the Gareth Delaney. <laughs> That's a little harsh now. Leg side, worked away, wicket off the first delivery. And the rest of the overs tidy as well. So six from at 15 gone, five remaining, 108 for four. Right, if they continue at uh, this rate, they'll get to one, four, three. Which is going to be a challenging target on the surface with a spin attack that Afghanistan do have. 
If they happen to go at nine and over, they get past the one five zero mark. Just eleven and over, get to one six three. So they've got some work to do still. But remember, they've got Rashid Khan, Karote, and Nobby. Slow delivery worked with the cutter for a single first up. Hope you're enjoying this telecast wherever you're uh, sitting and watching this. Live feed is available on youtube.com and at Firebird Universe. You mentioned Sachin Tendulkar with his keen eye. I remember playing a Bangalore in the World Cup in 2011 and the crowd were chanting Sachin's name, and he just rested his bat up against the stumps and just asked the crowd, just asked the crowd just to sit down, just put his hand up like, sit down, crowd, and all the crowd, universally, 10,000 people in that one stand just sat nice and quietly. And standing up to the stumps to John Mooney, I said, Satch, Satch, do you reckon they do that for me? He just smiled. <laughs> Don't think so. Chinnaswamy, they wouldn't listen to me, would they? Yeah, that important stage of the innings. No, you spoke yesterday at the pitch report about how important it is to finish the innings as well as start it. 58 scored in the last five by the team batting first. 43 yesterday. So it'll be important to see what they'll get today. 50 runs in this last five will get them the highest total in the T20i series, batting first so far, and they should fancy themselves. That's good stuff, McCarthy. Bustling nicely here. Oh, just slipped at the non-striker's end. The Nabi. It's a good point, Tina, because Afghanistan, Nelson for four, 111 for four, have the chance, the opportunity, nearly, if they play superbly well here, to almost bat on and out of the contest. 11 and over gets him 160. This is just losing his footing. Ibrahim, that is. So the chance really to, you never say never, but he get 155, 160 with spinners that they have. Rashid, Nabi, Karote. You're so far ahead of the game. Ireland will feel so much pressure. Early call of two. Gonna do that easily. Good running. Five off the Sova, yet to get a boundary, two balls to go. And good rotation of the strike and running between the wickets between these two. Change in the field. Fine leg comes up into the circle to a 45 position. Mid wicket goes back to the boundary. So long on, deep mid wicket, square on the boundary of the leg side fielders. Just a single that time. Again, it's a tidy over. They haven't got away Afghanistan at the moment. Big ball here, Hazy. We saw Barry McCarthy at this stage of the game yesterday get a little bit funky, trying a few too many different things at this stage. This over, he's just hammering the length. He needs to close this out. Deep thirds on the rope. Fine leg is inside the ring. I wonder... Will Ibrahim just fancy maybe getting inside the line and helping a leg side? Every chance he's going to be looking for uh, a single. 149 at the moment, Ibrahim Zadran. And that's gone past the outside edge. Stays a six only off over number 16. That's very good for Ireland, 114 for four. Well, the fate of the third T20, I indeed the series on the line, I think quite possibly over the course of these four overs. 
If Ireland can keep it to 30 or less under that magic 145 number, they'll fancy their chances. If they can't, and Afghanistan post 150 plus, very much the host of this series will be favoured to make it 2 1. Josh Little back for his final over. Niall O'Brien, Ahmed Fadai, join me. Yeah, big passage here, Lenny. Your spots on four overs. Afghanistan mentioned last over can nearly bat Ireland out of the game if they can finish with a real flourish here and get 155, 160. Thought of a second, but they won't take on George Dockrell's arm. This series has encapsulated us from start to finish us, really has ebbed and flowed all the way, Ahmed. Absolutely. Afghanistan is set nicely in the decider. The way I see it, another 22 deliveries, right? How many sixes they can hit? Say two, three, and the total will get to 150, 160. That's going to be 50. It's a sixth T20 I-50 for Ibrahim Zidran. They needed somebody that wasn't Rashid Khan, Mohamed Dabi or Karote to stand up. And it's been Ibrahim Zidran to do it, his first T20 I-50 versus Ireland. Yeah, he's a fine player. Excellent all-format cricketer. Technically very, very sound. Ibrahim Zidran, tall man, powerful. But most important and most impressive for a young player is how he assesses the situation of a game. Doesn't always come naturally to players, especially youngsters making their way in the game. It's a lovely moment. And as we've rightly said, he's put his side in a position of real power. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant from Balberni. That short fine and it's the big wicket of Mohamed Nabi. It goes to Josh Little, what a series he has had. I had that feeling. Josh Little lost over, does the damage. The dangerous Muhammad Nabi departs. A very soft dismissal, you tell. He got this, thought this was going down the leg side, so played this nicely straight into the hands of Balberni. What a beautiful catch. We've seen two beautiful catches from the two openers of Ireland. Muhammad Nabi departs, making six runs. Afghanistan 116 for five. Twenty deliveries left in the innings and a change in the order. He's come up from number nine. Surely the right call, Rashid Khan in. And they will take the single. The impact of Khan and Nabi on this series cannot be overstated. And in he comes, the captain. Yeah, fine player. Will be entertaining. This is the end of Nabi. It's down leg side, pace on the ball. Nabi just tries to help it on his way. It's a pretty good shot, truth be told. I think it's an excellent catch. Balberni just four or five yards off the edge of the circle. Maybe caught him a little bit out of position, truth be told, there. You would have expected your man of 45 to be sitting on the edge, but actually, by being that little bit closer, Balberni just narrowed the angle. That's a really good catch. A little picks up another pole in the series. Setting himself up beautifully for the IPL. Yeah, that was a big wicket. Muhammad Nabi, in the kind of form he was, he could have taken this score comfortably to 150 and more. Inside edge. Protection out there will keep it to just a single. Brilliant over from Ireland's premier bowler in demand around the world. Just the four runs from it. It's 1-1-8 for five. Six wickets in the series for Josh Little. He's a superstar in the making, isn't he? Brilliant to watch. He already is a superstar, absolutely. What a 
what a player he is for Ireland. Lack of boundaries for Afghanistan here in the final quarter of this innings is starting to hurt them. Josh Little, Niall, sensational. Well, I'm just looking at the figures. One for 27 from his four, and his third over went for 15. So he's bowled two overs in the power play, and two overs, we'll call it one in the middle and one at the back end, and one went for 15. So just exceptional numbers, brilliant series. Didn't play the one-day series. And just gets himself ready for... A big campaign in India with the Gujarat Titans. That's exceptional numbers. Mark Adair greeted with a flat bat to break that streak of a lack of boundaries all the way for six. What a strike from Zidran. Well, absolutely, Afghanistan had been on the back foot. 18 deliveries since the last boundary. Much needed welcome boundary for Afghanistan. Ibrahim Zidran, he's already made his 50, been there for a very long period of time. He should stay till the end, steer Afghanistan innings above 150. Beautiful shot that, great on the eyes. And there's a lovely flow to the bat there, wasn't there, from Ibrahim Zidran. An extension of the arms, getting it all the way up towards the base of the stand. All his shots are so charming to watch, Ibrahim Zidran. He stayed there in the middle. He got a chance, he got alive, but he's capitalized on that. What a beautiful shot that was. First six of his innings, and then he started with some wonderful shots. He's hit brilliantly towards the next term. Sweep shots brought into play. He went for the spinners and the pacers equally and cashed out on boundaries. Good for Afghanistan. He needs to finish the game till the end. Scored a huge number of runs through that extra cover region in particular in Ireland. Ireland just haven't had the answers to him tonight. Well, I've mentioned he's tall, he's got long levers, Lenny, so he hits the ball through the line nicely. He picks up a pull shot as well as anyone in this series on these two sides. He's a wonderful puller of the ball, and he pulls the ball up, so generally when he connects it goes to six, but he can get his arms through the ball beautifully, hit over extra cover. In fairness, a lot of the Afghanistan players hit really well through and over extra cover. Nabi Rashid himself. Now, change of angle here, Mark there around the wicket. They're going to go for the wide Yorkers, and if we get a look at the field, you can see there's a very, very fine third in the circle. And a deep backward point or a wide third, and then a deep cover. And the other two men in the offside up in the circle. Think back to the T20 World Cup in England, Stuart Broad. He's the first bowler I really remember using this tactic. When it goes well, it's absolutely spot on. It's risky against Rashid because of the wrist work. Nails it, and Mark Adair feels it's out. And acknowledges maybe just a flick of the turf. It didn't work for England back then. They were double dutched in. Well, it was just the first of the double dutching in 2009, wasn't it? Yeah, the Dutch have the... The water over England. Bangladesh, the T20 World Cup in Bangladesh, turned them over. De Groot, Tom De Groot, hitting them over the square leg boundary. Really, really good execution. Yeah, the Dutch haven't beaten England in a 50 over World Cup. Ahmed, what about Afghanistan? How big a day was that? That was a big day for Afghanistan. The way Afghanistan put that show, it was amazing to see in the Cricket World Cup. I'm sure you guys are enjoying it the more I talk about how they beat England. That was a wonderful game. Well, the thing about that, it wasn't really a surprise to many. And that was the, That's the biggest bit of credit you can give to Afghanistan. I think a lot of people were not surprised, almost expecting it. Ramped around the corner. Brilliant clarity of thoughts and vision from Ibrahim Zidran. He knew McCarthy was up in the circle, so he simply stepped outside his off stump, gets the ramp out, gets four. Well, that's the beauty of having spent time out there and seeing it from the non striker end. Kind of became predictable bowling those wide yokers. This time, Ibrahim doing the right thing and scooping it nicely. 
because it's a vacant area. The fielder is inside the circle and goes all the way for a boundary. This has been a big over for Afghanistan. 13 already off it. Last ball of the over. Afghanistan needed this on the back of a wonderful over from Josh Little. After the maximum from the first delivery, Adair battles back well, but there's still 14 from the over. 12 balls left, 1-3-2 for five. Is it all about that 1-4-5, that magic number? Afghanistan north of that, can Ireland still realistically chase it down? Well, Afghanistan should get over 150, Lenny. 132 for five, 12 balls. Should be getting another 22 to 25 runs here with Rashid, who can play so well, and Ibrahim, who's seeing the ball like a beach ball right now so 155 definitely on here for afghanistan trying to chase anything over that 150 for ireland is going to be very difficult but the surface is good i thought the surface last night played superbly well there's no demons in the surface it's all about ireland's planning you mentioned andrew leonard the clarity of thought from ibrahim that's what ireland need to bring when they face afghanistan spinners Man at long, oh, and over his head. Harry Tector thought he was in the game for a moment. I don't think this is out of the middle. McCarthy goes for a hard length, and Zadran swats him all the way for six. Ibrahim Zadran equals his highest runs in the T20i. Previous one was against Sri Lanka, this time 69, and still out there. That's a beautiful shot. Waited for it and smacked this. pressure on Barry McCarthy had a difficult 18th over in the second T20i last night but he came back incredibly well in the 20th with two wickets and just six runs including the big one of Rashid Khan these last 11 de deliveries huge for both sides miss it just clots it for a single Oh, the cries of anguish you heard through the stump, Mike. Ibrahim reckons he misses out. Yeah, much better. That's what you should have done. Straighter. This is a lovely hit. It's a cutter. I reckon he gets plenty of that. Long way over Harry Tector's head at long on. In a great position now. Well, it's called a CB round where I come from. A career best. Get the soft drinks in. I thought it was 69, previous best, but it's 67. It was in Sri Lanka. Previous series came in a losing cause, though. Well, Rashid Khan almost swings himself off his feet. Again, no real time in a rhythm. He'll want this one to be in a winning cause, Zadran. Just for die, you give us a little bit of insight Ibrahim with the technique he has and the power he has we've seen him open in the past batting at first drop here in this series is it a case potentially to have another crack up top yeah more to do with him to to play that anchor role come in number three and play the innings that he's played today stay till the end that's where it is mainly looked at Ibrahim Zadran So, yeah, I mean, uh, he has the ability. He's come from the test cricket. So he started with the test cricket, got into the one-day side. He's put together a wonderful partnership for the first wicket alongside Rahmanullah Gurbaz and doing the same job in the T20. A lot will say that maybe he's not for the T20. But the way I see his role is as an anchor, come in number three and carry along till the end. Yeah, I just look at the technique he has, first and foremost. And, and we're talking when you go up against the Australians of the world, the South Africans... India teams with with real pace up against someone like a Mitchell Starr for example Josh Hazelwood who bowls a heavy ball good pace he's got the technique to counter attack against the quality that they possess
So technically for me, he's sound. And I'm not, I'm, this comment isn't on just what I've seen tonight or in the last two or three weeks, but he's got the mindset to work it out, to work in innings, to build the innings. You mentioned the anchor. There's no reason why he couldn't bat top of the order and play a similar type of role. And just to back your point up here, Niall, he's batted seven times at the top of the order in T20 cricket, all in the last 15 months. He's got 350s from seven knocks up there, including that previous career best of 67 on out. His number is nowhere near as good at number three. Yeah, and I think he took the strike, like he faced the first ball in that uh, 67 he scored against Sri Lanka. Man out at cow corner, holds on. And for once, not just Mohammed Nabi, but Rashid Khan. They both fail with the bat, and Ireland are staying alive in this contest. Still scrapping, still fighting. Yeah, I think Ireland has done a brilliant job to have got constant breakthrough. A slower ball off cutter doing the trick for McCarthy. Rashid Khan not able to clear the field there. Comfort takes it comfortably. Rashid Khan, the hero the other night, cannot do much today. Three for him. Afghanistan 142 for six. Ijaz Ahmed Zai, at number eight, seven deliveries left. Well, what a stroke this is. Not out of the middle of the bat, but should get a couple. In fact, he'll get four as Josh Little's just made a bit of a meal of that. Running back from short third. Boundary to round out the 19th, one, four, six for six. Back-to-back -back big overs have just turned this game again. 14 from Mark Adair's 18. And 14 more thanks to that boundary from his very first ball for Ijez Ahmedzai. Keeps the pressure piled on Mark Adair for the 20th and final. Every run got a count here. Zidran on a career best 71. <laughs> Look out! Where's the back gun? Even Mark Adair can find the funny side of it. That's gone a long way. Not the ball, but the bat. Well, at the end of the last over, he called for gloves. And I was a little bit surprised because we had had a wicket just the ball before. So the umpire actually didn't allow him to change his gloves. And look at that. He's got to hit the ball straight. Get your back out through the ball, not leg side. Another thing is about his footwork. So he comes across quite all the way on to the fifth stump. So he takes that wide ball thing out of equation. I remember he was talked to and he was said that hold your back foot for a while and so you could at least bring the wide ball into equation. But that Rashid Khan not able to do the magic that he did the other day. Comfort takes it comfortably. That's been really, really solid breakthroughs. Nabi and Rashid not doing much today. Very well bowled, Mark Adair. Dot followed by a single to start with. I'll just correct you there, Ahmed. They've not done much yet. They still have to bowl, Mohamed Nabi and Rashid Khan. They still could have a huge impact on this game. Oh, absolutely. But uh, the way they played the other day, everyone was expecting, I can tell, 
Nabi and Rashid to do the wonders with the bat and the kind of platform they got for themselves. You would tell that they could have just scored some runs, but that was well done by Ireland, who'd done their homework right and couldn't let them do much of a damage. You're so greedy. You want them to get runs, you want them to get wickets. Come on, give someone right. else a chance. I'm not even talking about wickets. Andy has talked about wickets. You got two Irishmen around you. I feel for you a bit here. He's in an Irish sandwich here. He doesn't quite know how to eat it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, it's nice to be between two Irishmen. I can try some Irish accent. It's good to be here. Uh, yeah, I cannot. <laughs> it's really bad, isn't it? <laughs> you were doing so well. So, so well until you tried the accent. Everything else has been perfect, mate. It's been great to have you and your thoughts throughout this series. Got a long way up and I think a long way back to Ahmed Zai. Well, we saw him shadow batting, didn't we? Well, Ibrahim was changing his gloves, trying again and again and again. And this one, you practice what you preach, a maximum. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good shot. That's a nice cameo into his slot. You get full toss at this stage, you will want to cash it with a maximum. Two shots, first a boundary and then a six. What a night for him. Yeah, just two quick numbers that will concern Irish fans in a big way, Niall O'Brien. This is the highest score of the series by either team and the highest individual score indeed as well for Ibrahim Zadran. No one's made more than 1-5-2 yet. And it shows the scale of Ireland's task now in the chase. Yeah, certainly going to be difficult. But the one, one clutch of hope that Ireland can hang on to, they've had two good power plays with the bat. So if they can have another good start in the chase and then somehow play better through the middle stage. That's been the areas, that's been the middle overs against spin. So that's all Ireland need to focus on right now. Mark Adair just needs to close this out. 153 for six. I think Afghanistan played so well today. They've played such a controlled innings. And where have they hit? They've hit down the ground, through the line of the ball. We haven't seen any inventive batting bar one or two little scoops when batters have been very well set so it's not well, the template is there i've said it all series i've said it since we've got the charge you hit that charge you always hit down the ground through the line of the ball and it's going to be a wide the numbers not just in terms of the high scores that will concern Ireland, though, or about the spinners in that second innings. In the series thus far, 21 overs of spin, bowled by Afghanistan. It's gone for 95 runs, 12 wickets, at an average of under eight, an economy of 4.52. Unless that changes, Niall, Ireland are not going to chase this total down and win this series, surely. No, that is, the, that is the big challenge ahead, but it's the how they go about it. That's the main thing, Lee, how they go about that challenge. Well, it's pretty well bowled and it's good awareness. Good awareness. It's going to be run out. I don't mind it. Good from Ibrahim to get back on strike. Excellent from Lorca Tucker to realise, keep his composure. And Mark Adair just did really well to get back to the stumps to affect the runner. They might just check it upstairs. Yeah, I think it has been sent upstairs, but I also think you're right. I think this is out. And Ahmed Zai feels as though he's gone, but a great little cameo from him, 10 off just three deliveries. Yeah, the only thing you can blame him for is that they previously didn't go on it. If they miss the ball, they'll just run the single, whatever the equation may be. Yeah, he is not made his ground and he's out. But 1-4, one, 1-6 one, for Ijaz Ahmed Zai, he's done his job. Having faced four balls, scored 10 runs is all that you need at this stage of the game. So Afghanistan are 154 for seven. Yeah, there's the confirmation. So Ahmed Zai run out for 10, just one ball left. It is 154 for seven. One ball to go. And if Ireland can just take a tiny bit of momentum in here, a good final delivery. And I think they'll get it. Will scamper a bye. So it's going to be 155 on the total. 
Ireland to win this series and need to chase 156 to win it. Well, that's a really, really well put together innings. He's a little bit disappointed, Ibrahim, at the end, not to get a couple more over the ropes. But that's a top class innings, a top class performance by all the Afghanistan batters. Mustering the highest total of the series, 155. Rashid Khan winning the toss a couple of hours ago. Absolutely no hesitation. We want runs on the board and plenty of them. And then let our spinners get into this Irish batting lineup who have struggled all series. Afghanistan, a men in blue, superb. Ibrahim Zadran once again showing all his class for a 72 not out from 51 balls. Yeah, body language very interesting for me here. Ryan Eagleson, the bowling coach, is just trying to G the boys up, but a few of the Irish players looking a tiny bit dejected. They know that this will not be an easy chase. Ben White again has been impressive. Josh Little, probably the pick of the attack, though, for me, with one for 27. He was outstanding. And the star of the show with the bat, Ibrahim Zidran. How good was that? Well, absolutely. He anchored the inning, stayed out there, got his career best, 72 runs. I believe one area that he could have just done well was the wide yokers that he was not able to negotiate. Bit of a struggle against Sri Lanka and once again over here, but he's really played brilliantly. Yeah, nearly 50% of the total with that innings of 72. It's a wicket apiece for the six bowlers that Ireland choose to use. Maybe a little surprise that Gareth Delaney only bowled the, the one over, one for five, but the Jew might have been a factor in that in Camfer, as the additional support was pretty good with one for 23. As they have been throughout this tour, Ireland Seamers, Adair, Little, McCarthy, very, very good. OK, let's get downstairs to Tino Moeo. I think he's got the star of the show with the bat with him right now. Ibrahim Zadran, outstanding performance. How do you feel after contributing so well to the highest score of the series so far, actually? Uh, Bismillah rahman rahim Yeah, uh, we put a nice total on the weekend. Uh, we are quite... A uh, few runs short, but uh, uh, it's no problem. We will try to cover that in the fielding. Uh, as a batsman, yeah, I'm feeling uh, uh, very happy that I didn't play in the last two games, but uh, I contributed my uh, performance in this game. Uh, now I will try to do well in the fielding. You obviously went at the top of the innings, but best power play score for you guys in the series, 51 for one, that would have contributed immensely to that total. Yeah, if you look at the last two games, uh, uh, we didn't uh, quite well, you know, we didn't have a good start in the last two games in the power play, but this time we had a good power play, so we thought about it, we communicate and we discussed that, that today we will uh, try to have a good power play, good start in the power play, then uh, we will try to build partnership after power play as well. Yeah, wonderful partnership that you mentioned in that middle part with Ishak. What was the conversation between the two of you? It looked like he started to want to kick on a little bit towards that 15th over mark. Yeah, I was trying to uh, rotating of the strike, so that was my aim. And it's my role in the team uh, to play from start to tail 15. And uh, if I said then I can play for the last four games, uh, for, for, the, for the last four overs as well. So that uh, we were communicating uh, over by over, uh, that was our target. We were targeting that over, so uh, we will uh, try to make a small partnership, uh, then we will go uh, longer. Is 155 enough? Yeah, it's enough on this wicket. Wicket is quite, uh, ball is not coming well, uh, quite hold, uh, holding itself. So we will try to bowl in the line in length and uh, do well fielding. Outstanding performance today, Ibrahim. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks to Ibrahim Zidran for speaking to Tino Moeo. Interesting to hear that he felt as though there was a few runs left out there. But one thing is for certain, this match and this series, it is tantalizingly poised and it could, without doubt, still go either way. To take a historic first ever away series victory against Afghanistan, Ireland are going to need 156 to win. Don't go anywhere too far.
Well, it's a magical Monday here at the historic Sharjah Cricket Stadium. The series is on the line between these two great rivals. Will it be Paul Sterling in Ireland? Or will it be Rashid Khan in Afghanistan? This is the tail of the tape from the first innings. We've seen the highest total of the series and the highest individual batting performance of the series too with Ibrahim Zidran's career best 72 not out. Being the mainstay of the innings, good contributions too from Ishak and Atal. For the bowlers, wicket shared around, one apiece for all six that were used. Just that one over for Gareth Delaney. The pick of the Irish bowlers, certainly the IPL bound, Josh Little. So let's get a look at the very best of this first innings. I've got Devender Kumar alongside me here from him in a moment. That was a big moment, wasn't it? As Gareth Delaney misjudged one down at deep third before Harry Tector took an excellent catch to make that first breakthrough. And there was balls flying into the air. A few catches went down, which were costly. This one in particular from Gareth Delaney should have been held. Yeah, shaky work in the outfield, but the guns. They started to play positive cricket, playing more shots, but soft dismissal. Siddhi Gattal playing back to the bowler. And stunned. The ball just holding in the pitch, then trying to go big. Hammering one in the air. Not quite judging it. Should have left for Ben White, then launching it to the onside. Continuing to play shot. Running out of runs in this tournament. Hazbutullah Omar Jai. Ibrahim was super late, judging the line and length. Hitting the area, the square of the wicket, to down the ground as well. Some superb shots down the ground. And then the signature shot over square leg to pick up the boundaries. His presence was important. We see good support from the other end as well. And trying to up the ante, trying to play too many shots to accelerate through the innings. A brilliant catch taken by Paul Sterling. Sad, the batsman dismissed. Ibrahim was superb, getting his half century, He's running between the wicket. His understanding, his position at the crease was important in anchoring the innings in the in the first phase. A soft dismissal. Mohammad Nabi was caught brilliantly, and then Ibrahim playing those expansive shots through the offside. He was particularly strong through that extra cover region, wasn't he, Devender? And for all the disappointment that Ireland will have had with those drop chances, they took some good ones too. Great efforts from Josh Little, Paul Sterling, Andrew Balberni, and then that one from Curtis Camper was very well judged too. But a nice little cameo coming in down the order before some late drama. Good skills from Lorcan Tucker. He nearly got two runouts in the final over. Maybe, as you can see from the body language, neither side overly delighted, but Afghanistan maybe marginally ahead. Ireland are going to need that 156 to win. Some lovely shots of Afghanistan, mainly the capital city there, Kabul. And we are all ready to go after a break that has flown by. How beautifully poised is this series? As I am delighted to be joined by Devender Kumar still, and now Mike Hazeman has come in next to me. Mikey. Well, you've seen a huge amount of cricket all around the world. This rivalry is a great one, though, isn't it? And this game, we could be in for another thriller. 
Yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I really have. It's been terrific to watch these two teams lock heads in the, the Red Bull game, the Test match, then the, uh, the one day as, and now this, and now we're down to the final innings of this tour. I think it's been wonderful. There's been some emotion out there as well, which has been good. 155 runs posted by Ireland after Afghanistan won the toss and elected to bat first. Correction, posted by 155 by Afghanistan. Ireland need 156. And there's Balburni who played uh, nice in the last game. He's got a really important job to do, but not as important as this man. Here's key. Absolute key. Wonderful player, Paul Sterling. I've seen him get uh, a lot of runs in white ball cricket, in T20 cricket. 33 years of age, 137 games so far. Strike rate of 135. He's a wonderful, wonderful cricketer. But he's up against a guy who's really talented, who swings the ball both ways. He will generally start with a couple across a right-handed batsman. Then uh, at some stage, whether it's ball three or four, he'll bring one back. That's what his uh, ploy normally is. But he's got talent. It's going to be uh, wonderful to watch. All the four white ball games so far have been won by the team that batted first. That's a challenge that Ireland have got as well. Batting second now on a surface, which is good. That's gone across him. And he's got it nice and fine. He's got a boundary first up. He won't mind that it was the outside court of the bat. Well, immediately rushed, wasn't he? Andrew Balberni, it's come off an edge. Very rare you'd have two or three slips in place in the shortest format. Fortune for Balberni, but a pleasing start for Ireland. Yeah, thick outside edge, slip in position, trying to take the ball away from the right hand batsman. Bet on the ball early on into the innings, always helpful. Starts off over the wicket for Ricky. Doesn't take long before he changes to go around. And initially, uh, will continue with going across, I would imagine. I don't think this one will come back in. He'll probably try and go with the same ploy. He does, goes across him. Now the questions to be asked for Balburni is which is the one that swings back in considerably? That's what's going through his head right now. Yeah, he's been challenged. Challenged in this tournament with the swing bowling early on. The ball that's coming back into the batsman had struck off the inside edge as well. It's going to be interesting. They got deep square in position on the onside on the boundary. Fine leg is up in the circle, slip in position, third man on the boundary. Will this be that delivery? Every chance this one's coming back. Did come back a little bit, but it's beautifully driven. That's a lovely shot through the covers for four. Good stuff from Balberni. Two boundaries already. Trademark Balberni. It's the cover drive. It's his favourite stroke. Sometimes he can just struggle to get those feet moving, particularly that front foot early in the innings. This time he gets a nice stride in. And a positive stroke. I think Ireland have identified if they have any chance of chasing down this total, they are going to have to have a flying power play. Gave you those spinners numbers just towards the end of that first innings. The Seamers are going at an economy rate of over 9.4, and they've only picked up two wickets from 19 overs, Mikey. These are the overs that Ireland need to profit from. Two wickets on an average of 90. Yeah, when the ball's nice and hard, that's when they can uh, get after the bowling. If the bowling's slightly over pitched, he did go for 22, I think it was, for Ricky when he came back at the end of uh, the innings yesterday. Bowling his third over. It's just a change. The slip has been removed. mid wicket in position now. Positive so far. Sliding across again. Good stuff from Faruqi. Two power plays thus far for Ireland in the series. 48 for one and 51 for one. Mikey, for me, I think they're going to need to go past those two power plays thus far to chase this total down. What they would love to do is get more than 56 from the first six to leave it with less than 100 off the final 14. Then. Well, Sterling's going to be positive. He's going to play his normal game, and he played some beautiful shots yesterday through the covers in particular. So he will be uh, as positive as he can be. Balburni's got to do that, and so far he is also. Change of angle now, around the wicket, swinging the ball in. Thick outside edge, on the bounce, just one. 
changing the angle, going round the wicket, trying to create the doubt in the mind of the batsman of whether the ball is going to come back into the right hand batsman or not. Just holding its shape and getting the thick outside edge. One bounce to the fieldsman, Omar Zai, at third man. It's really an indicator there isn't movement through the air. And with it maybe a little more due tonight than we saw last night, maybe that just gives a small window for Ireland. Well, that one actually was a ball that went away from Balburnie. Now Sterling has faced Faruqi many times. He'll know exactly what he's uh, capable of. And I reckon Faruqi is going to try and bowl that big hooping in-swinger. And he did. Met with the middle of the bat, though. Nine off the first over. Nine for none. Tucker, Tector. I wonder if that's going to change. I wonder if Tector's going to come in at uh, number three. That's what I'd be thinking to do in this situation because I need to be positive. Need the best players get the most overs, I would think, in this game. They've started off nicely. Nine off the first over. Naveen Huck. He's got him. He's bowled him. What a ball that is. He's just taken the leg bail. That is magnificent stuff. Terrific delivery from Naveen Huck first up. The angle, ability to bring the ball back into the right-hand batsman. That was a great delivery. They understand the value of early wicket with the possibility of due later in this innings. It was important that the fast ball strikes early. Naveen Ulak with a beautiful delivery coming back into the right-hand batsman. That ball came long way back into the right-hand batter and taking the bail off over the top of the next turn. Andy Balburnie goes for nine. Nine for one. Quite a remarkable delivery that means that Lorcan Tucker arrives at number three. He's going to have to be nice and positive. Let's look at what he's done so far over a thousand runs in his 65 games, strike rate of a 121, 650s, best of 94 not out. Job to be done by Tucker. Watch this tip that bail. Just the top of that leg bail. And then a little bit of damage to the keeper, I think, has sprawled to his left, trying to hang on to it. And then he's landed on the ball, probably in and around his hip. That can be nasty. He's had a bit of treatment. He's OK to continue. What a delivery. Yeah, magnificent stuff from Naveen Haq. Oh, and he's got another one. First ball, Tucker. He's on his way. Brilliant from Naveen Haq. Great delivery. Celebration time for Afghan fans, for Afghanistan cricket team. They needed early wickets. Naveen Ulak striking again. Back-to-back -back wickets for him. And Tucker's poor form continues. Once again, that movement back into the right-hand batsman. Lovely seam presentation ball coming in, trying to hoik it through the onside. And Bales flying. Wickets tumbling down. Tucker goes for not. Nine for two. Two in two for Naveen.
Two wickets and two balls. Harry Tech, the might as well battle at number three. Now he's on a hat-trick, so that elevates things. What a delivery this is. This is the first. Tipping the top of that leg bail. Locking that to the ground, and this is the next one. Smashing into the stumps. Superb movement. Hat-trick ball. Seventh time. Opportunity for hat-trick. Big blade. One run. Yeah, remarkable the number of times in just two T20Is before tonight, three in total in the series that we've seen bowlers on a hat-trick. And again, it doesn't happen. And for Harry Tector, there has been a little bit of conjecture amongst the Irish fans on social media. They know Lorcan Tucker's struggling in that number three position. He can just be a little bit like a cat on a hot tin roof, particularly early in his innings. He likes to go at bowlers does Lorcan Tucker doesn't get into a stable position cleaned up right through the grate two brilliant deliveries yeah, superb from Naveen Huck when he's on song he's special oh that's almost got through Sterling hasn't been uh, on strike much that was just the second ball he's faced I just wonder does the Afghanistan dugout have our commentary on did the seam bowlers hear their numbers they weren't happy with us saying that they were averaging 90 coming into tonight. But haven't they bounced back in a big way? He went round the park in the first T20I, much better last night. And now two and two, big, big blows. Naveen Ulhak with a deadly combination. Use of the crease, going wide of the crease, creating angle and then swinging back into the right-handers. Real event now every time the Paul Sterling's on strike because he is key, absolutely key for Ireland to get up in this game. Hasn't got off the mark yet, two balls only is faced. I don't think there was any connection with the bat. We'll have to wait and see what the umpire says. Leg by. Maybe not indicated as strongly in that delivery, but that same presentation for those first two deliveries. A youngster watching on is how to bowl in swing. That release point, absolutely perfect. There's a reason why this man is in demand in the leagues all around the world, like so many of his teammates. And bowling from so wide as well. Very few ball from this wide. Last ball of the over, turning off for two. Gee, that came in late, came in very late. Brilliant. Outstanding over. Wicket off the first two balls of the over. 11 for two. the way that this ball is moving around at the moment both these batsmen Sterling and uh, and also Tech will be thinking about playing with a full face of the bat going hard down the ground if they can if they get that opportunity going to try and combat this movement Faruqi again from around the wicket to Sterling for the first time today he's got that away leg side no he hasn't it's buys Yes, he has. It's four runs. Yeah, I think it might have just been a little bit of glove involved here. You got a better look. Yeah, just something off the glove. You cannot call that a chance. A sprawling, tumbling Ishak, who's been a little bit in the wars in the first three overs. One thing is certain, Sterling will continue to play his shots, but the ball just finding a way to hoop around under the floodlights. Just held us line that time. It's the one that's the meant to go away from the right hander from around the wicket. It's hard to uh, get some movement when he's falling from that wide. Get movement away, that is.
extra bounce that time. Suddenly he wants a third man in position. Yeah, Rashid Khan and, and Paul Sterling, the two leaders here. One point you brought up just as we came into the second innings, Hazy, was how keenly contested it's been, how much passion we've seen on show. Paul Sterling's been adamant that he loves to see that passion from both sides. And I know there's been a few moments of contention, but there's just so much fire out there. It's been great viewing. Got him. It's off the pad. Off the pad, onto the timber. Three down now, and that is a massive wicket. Fantastic from Fazilak Faruqi. Pitching up, getting the ball to swing. Off the pad, deflection. Bales flying here again. And Fazilak Faruqi strikes for Afghanistan. Wicket stumbling, Ireland are in dire straits. Three for 15. So Faruqi's picked up uh, his first wicket. Rajni tours with it. Every single ball that's bowled in this match now has picked up a wicket. One for 13 now to Faruqi. He's been hooping this ball around. Perhaps a little bit fortunate with that one. But he'll still claim it. Camphor now. Did a good job with the ball. Cannoned off the pad. Big wicket. Oh, that's an inside edge onto the pad that time, but not onto the stumps. Yeah, you're right, there's a bit of fortune for Faruqi in that wicket of Sterling, but the brilliance of it is the line. That's not where Paul Sterling likes to score. And Camper, who's had a bit of a tricky series with the bat in the white ball stuff, was nearly sliced in half from his very first delivery. It's just that angle, isn't it? It keeps forcing in upon you as a right-hander. Ireland, it's been a tour that's been so good for them in so many ways, but right now they're in danger of it ending in tatters. They're being blown away by the Afghan seamers in the first three. Oh, that's come back a lot, and it's come back very late again. That's when it's tough, when it comes back so late. Beautifully bowled. 15 for three. Zadran played really nicely for his 72, not out. Got them to 155. Ireland in trouble at the moment. Three overs gone. Wonder strong power play. Not to be at this stage because of this guy generally. Got an edge this time on the bounce to the man who was at a bit of a f deep slip, I suppose. He's uh, not at a slip position or a third man. He's on the bounce there. Well, six incoming deliveries from the previous over, starting with the ball that holds its line. Bit of extra bounce. You would think with the scoreline as it is, he might as well be actually catching the slips in a standard spot. Pick up another wicket, I would think it's uh, pretty much all over. With Rashid Khan yet to bowl and Karote, Nabi, Seamers have done a wonderful job. Naveen Hutt, two for one. Great return. Nice, solid shot down the ground, full face of the bat. Four runs, that's how he should be playing. Well, I think for Ireland, there has to be a case that this man may need to move up to number three in T20 cricket. 
The reason why, you can just see technically how much stronger and sounder he is than Lorcan Tucker against a ball that is moving around. In a very difficult phase. The last period in T20 cricket for Lorcan Tucker since the start of last summer. He's got just 69 runs at an average of 8.62 at number three. You surely want this man, Tector, to face as many deliveries as you can within the 20 overs. Oh, it's come back a lot. I think it's too high. Getting the ball to swing back to Kemper. Was going high over, it seems. Once again, that in-swinging delivery, hitting high over the pipe head there. Kemper not. Tector 5. They need a partnership. 136 to win from 99. Afghanistan coming into this innings with the expectation of their fast bowlers delivering because in the last match, the story was different. Spinners taking the majority of wickets, creating the impact. Different case altogether. In the decider, Pacers running right here at Sharjah. Catching it, short cover for Kampfer. Chopped away, good shot, back with a square on the offside. Nicely played for four. And still hope here for Ireland, plenty of depth to their batting. And they need this man in screen alongside Harry Tector to step up. Very much the man for all seasons, across all formats. Loves to cut and loves to pull. He gets that nicely through the gap between the two men. That point and cover point and gets his first boundary. With Dew already on the ground, how the men is the ball. Marching ahead also, spinners to bowl majority of overs. It will be interesting. Nicely called by Tector. Just a quick comment about uh, the Jew, the, the spraying. What they do with the spraying of the Jew is they uh, they cover it. This is the rope that uh, came out to just try and move a little bit of the Jew around the place. What they do is they sprayed it earlier yesterday and also again today with a wax coating, actually. It's used on golf courses. And what happens is the Jew forms on the blades of grass. And because it's on that wax, it's on the blades of grass, and then falls straight into the soil. That's how they uh, they work it. So it does make quite a difference. It made a big difference the other day. There wasn't any dew. These days, the experienced bowlers, the spinners, don't worry too much about a ball. It's a bit damp. Slow ball that time for Naveen. Direct hit. Would have been OK. Four overs gone. 25 for three. What a start by Afghanistan. Ireland with it all to do. Another 131 required. What a fantastic opening burst this has been by Faisal Haq Faruqi and Naveen Ul Haq. Faruqi being kept on now for a third over. Camfer trying to improvise, just about getting away with it. It's uh, Ijaz running back from fine leg. Got Fidai and Niall alongside me. Good evening to you both, gentlemen. And it's advantage Afghanistan at the moment. Thank you, Brian. I think uh, the idea to score runs inside the power play has fired back for Ireland. Lost quick wickets, three wickets. There's been a lot of swing. I like the idea to bring in Farooqi for the third over. It's when you see the Afghanistan paces bowling so well. It's what gives you 
such confidence, I'd imagine, for Dyer as an Afghanistan fan that they're just not reliant on the spin bowling element as they were for a long time in the white ball format of the game, ODI cricket and T20 cricket. It was always a case of, especially 50 over cricket, get 220 on the board and try and restrict the spin. But now, in the modern era, excellent pace bowlers coming through to give the support to the likes of Mujib and Rashid and Nabi. Really exciting time to be an Afghanistan fan. Yeah, spot on. And it's not only the pace, it's the understanding of the situation, bowling the slow ones, the cutters, coming with all those variations and bringing you back to Afghanistan at the high performance center. They're working with youth who are already bowling at 130 plus. The hope is that they'll be able to click on 140 plus. So yeah, they're working on improving that area and it's so far been quite nice. Made a lovely sound off the bat, that. And Ramanullah Gurbas at third man, can't get around. With the boundary for Tector. He's the man at the moment for Ireland. You know, I think of that century he scored in the ODI, Harry Tector. He scored two or three beautiful, crisp boundaries exactly like this. I'm sure there must be the planning from Afghanistan to try and throw it wide to Tector, but hasn't worked in the series or the tour so far. He's been very, very adept, Harry Tector, at playing that square drive and the ball just skipping off the surface in the outfield. Yeah. Fidai, just to... And you might carry on this conversation. Only one ball left in the over. Maybe pick it up at the next over. Maybe have a think about it. But how do the talent scouts in Afghanistan find the talent in the system coming through domestic club cricket academies trials and then how do they go about cherry picking because there must be an abundance of talent coming through and just trying to focus on the ones that really have got the ingredients maybe we'll be able to pick it up at the start of the next over well bowled by Faruqi that's three done for him and five done in this island innings 31 for three Well, Nile, uh, on your question, how the talent comes through, it is. And you put it so right. The academies play between them. And then from the academies, like there are so many academies at all the provinces. It's been a growing game in Afghanistan. The good news is that we just signed the one-year contract, like the with the Itisalat being the title sponsor. So more funds and more support coming into the Afghanistan cricket. Out towards deep square leg from Tector, another boundary. Welcomes Omazai into the attack by hitting him for four. You talk about talent, you cannot ignore Tector. He's been a brilliant to watch player. He's really, really been playing nicely. He knows which areas to attack and how to play and go about his business. Talking about the Afghanistan talent hunt, so from the academies, then they get to come and one team comes and then the domestic structure is that there are list A, four-day games, three-day games. Now, Shpagiza, our T20 league in Afghanistan, has become part of the domestic cricket structure. The APL hopefully coming through at the end of the year, hopefully next year. So those are all the opportunities where the youth will uh, have the possibility to show their talent, plus the high-performance center where the players are already being trained and prepared. A stifle the pill, nothing doing. And and in the regions, in the various regions you mentioned, Fadai, development officers on the shop floor, so to speak, on the ground, nurturing, finding, because I would imagine a lot of the talent that will come through Afghanistan maybe won't come through in the conventional manner. So it's up to people actually working, coaching, trying to find something, trying to unearth 
that special talent, that next Rashid Khan. Yeah, absolutely. One such find has been Fazal Haq Farooqi, for instance, bringing him from the tape ball cricket, seeing that the, the officers at the zone there, watching his game, thinking the fact that he can be a pace sensation after Hamid and we really have not had much. So Fazal Haq Farooqi from Baghlan uh, bringing in his game. So from the tape ball cricket coming into bowl to the likes of Rahmat Shah and the others and then getting him out, giving that joy. Oh, I got that national player of Afghanistan out and that confidence to come and play for the national side so the players the current players have also got a big role to play it's not just their own performance here on the park here in Sharjah but actually nurturing and giving the hope and the inspiration for these teenagers and these youngsters to come through and then the performances that the national team put, for instance, the four win at the ODI World Cup have inspired a lot of people. Just right after Afghanistan beat Pakistan, England, parents started coming to the academy, brought their children. Oh, that's high in the air, but that will fall shortly. And how important is it for Dai that uh, a whole host of uh, Afghanistan players, eight I think it is, are going to play in the IPL this year? How important is that from a, a shop window perspective for the up-and-coming talent? Well, absolutely it is uh, so evident when you see Rashid Khan. Now, IPL kind of stage gave that platform to the Rashid Khan, Muhammad Nabi, Noor Ahmad Lakhanwal, Asmatullah Omarzai, who's bowling right now, been picked by the Gujarat Titans. So all this give more inspiration to the young talent. Because with this, they are able to come and perform back for the national side. End of the over, end of the power play, 36 for three. End of the power play then. It's uh, Ireland's worst power play with the bat in this series. Their uh, previous efforts with the bat, 48 for one and 51 for one. And as if the situation isn't powerless enough, Rashid Khan now comes on. Four overs, three for 19 and four overs, four for 14 in the series thus far. You rightly say it, it's seven wickets to him in this T20I series since his comeback. Harry Tector remained unbeaten in the first T20, 56 runs, and on the back of his brilliant performance, Ireland, alongside Ben White, they won that match. Now, Rashid Khan got him out first ball in the second T20I when he got on hat-trick. It's been a brilliant uh, tournament so far. Seven times bowlers getting onto the hat-trick, not able to materialize that, but it's been such a brilliant show by the bowlers as well. So Rashid Khan to bowl to Harry Tector. This is one to watch out for. Niall, Henrik Milan said in the lead up to tonight's game, there's been a lot of thinking going on about uh, how to play the spin and Rashid in particular. What would that thinking have involved, you reckon? Well, Brian, time will tell. Let's, let's let the pictures do the talking, really, because the first two games, the... It's been a bit of a mind blank, truth be told, not just against Rashid. And I would hazard a guess that maybe the bit more thinking needs to be done. I have said it till I'm blue in the face, Brian, on this trip. In Sharjah, players that are successful hit strong shots down the ground and hard sweeps. I haven't seen too many players prosper with paddles, scoops, reverse scoops. Not easy, and I can say that with experience because I've been befuddled and confused by Rashid Khan as well as anybody but you have to try and implement a game and a process that will give you the best percentage of success hard sweep better yes the field set for the hard sweep as well there's a deep square leg a deep mid wicket as well 
but don't get it as hard as Ishaq got it in the second game, straight into the hands of the fielder. When I asked him, he said it got middled so well, I wanted to keep it on the ground and win all the way in the air, straight into the hands of the fielder. But you're absolutely right, Nile. Now look at Rashid, he's given away two runs, so you see his four overs, what an impact it can have on the required rate, which is already close to nine. Well, just looking at the two balls, Harry Tector is facing this over. The first ball ran onto his pad, didn't pick it, got a leg by, and that ball there, even there. Don't think Harry Tector, as well as he's playing, and as good as a player as he is, is picking Rashid Khan. Plays him off the back foot, won't get two. Rashid Khan gets in and out of his over very quickly. That's an excellent start from the superstar. 39 for three. One hundred and seventeen from seventy-eight balls is the equation for Ireland. Already the asking rate up to nine. It's very important. Little passage of play this for Asmatullah Omazai. And you're watching the passage of play thanks to Firebird. This is a Firebird production for the Afghanistan Cricket Board. And it's been a pleasure for all of us to work on this production. Yeah, really key spell this for Omazai. He's had a very fallow period in white ball cricket in this series and of course he goes straight from here to the Gujarat Titans and he's taking over from Hardik Pandya so he's got uh, big shoes to fill there so he'll need all the confidence he can get going into that tournament that's a lovely lovely ball beautiful seam position enough pace you wouldn't say he's fast but he's got enough pace but he's had a tough time as you quite rightly mentioned Brian he's really struggled with the bat today's dismissal was a real shot of desperation pull away in the air there's a man in the deep Omid Zai into the attack and who else Naveen brilliant with the ball now in the deep Harry Tector plinks one and Ireland sink further. Well, that's the big wicket. Afghanistan would be very pleased to have taken Asmatullah Omar Zai. We were talking about him looking for some confidence going into the IPL. And what a wicket to your name. Harry Tector, the man that could have saved Ireland for sure. You would skill and talent that he has couldn't do it today. 16 for him. Ireland a 39 for four. George Dockrell in at number six, missed game one because of illness. It's interesting, watching him bowl today before the start of play. He hasn't bowled a ball in this uh, three-match series. But you can see there, he needs just 26 runs to uh, get to 1,000 in this form of the game. This is why he's here. Yeah, Harry Tector. You will consider the fact that he will want to stay down there till the end. But Asmatullah Omar Zai feels pumped up and why not? He's been looking for some confidence. Couldn't do it with the bat. But Rashid Khan hugs him 
with a great pleasure the fact that he's got him the big fish Eddie Tector he's been the man to watch out for he's a real talent real skill Ireland has got Naseeb Khan the CEO of the Afghanistan cricket board enjoying the show Dockrell got five in the previous game if he can get those 26 runs he'll be the eighth Ireland men's batter to reach the mark of a thousand in this form of the game made his debut way back in 2010 actually in the first t20 international between these two teams in colombo back in back in that year that was uh, just prior to the icc world 2020 in the caribbean still a teenager then minhaj raz alongside zia the team manager of Afghanistan and the heads of operation doing a lot of work. And Nabi's little boy, yeah, you caught it right, Nile. He can play cricket, he can play football. Asmatullah Omar Zail feel very happy. Naveen Ulhaq, you said it rightly. He's had a beautiful day in the second innings. Got wickets, catch. Yeah, there you go, Nile. Yeah, little Rohan. Nabi's boy. I tell you what, he's a good footballer. I played about 10 minutes of football with him today. He was on the chest, on the volley, heading the ball. Looks like a proper little sportsman. I said, where's your cricket bat? At home, sir, he said. Just wants to play football. His favourite footballer, Ronaldo. I said, which Ronaldo? <laughs> wow. Not the Brazilian one, he said. Well, he's already a celebrity. See, Niall has done an interview with him. That is something to consider in your later career as a footballer or cricketer Rohan a very cute kid midwicket coming into the circle for the last ball of the over <laughs> terrific over that from Omazai just the wide from it plus the wicket of course an island in all sorts of strife 40 for four in eight overs Rashid Khan, first over has gone for two. 40 for four it is after eight. Tight for Ireland. Beautifully bowled, lovely flight. Just a prime example of how difficult it is to pick. Fast arm action, fast wrist as well. As soon as a batsman arrives at the crease, like Doc Bro, he will uh, certainly get a wrong one. Very early. That strong defensive shot from Dockrell. So they need to go at a shade under 10 of the over at the moment. Six wickets in hand, Ireland. Yeah, tall order. Tall order. It's that wickets column along with the runs that they've scored at this stage. Scoring at less than five. Boundaries have been very difficult to come by. In the ninth over, only seven fours. The docker is getting a good stride in. He's doing a nice job at the moment playing against Rashid Khan, but uh, Rashid Khan's drawing that ball nicely. He's going to slip in that wrong, and I reckon. I'll try and uh, just get it between that bat and pad.
off the back foot, that's always a little bit risky against uh, Rashid Khan because of the way that it uh, just skids on nicely, came back a fraction. Wasn't that big turning wrong and just turned a little bit. Lots of encouragement out there from Afghanistan at the moment. Discussion going on. Are they thinking about a change in the field? No. Slip stays. He's just gestured to the leg side. And there is finally a change in the field. Fazalak Faruqi goes to 45 and the long leg round to backward square. Around the wicket, that's why. He bowls the wrong and around the wicket. And it did turn a bit. Tight over, four from it. All the fours, 44 for four. tells a real story that run rate has now just dropped off considerably at the wrong time they haven't lost any more wickets of late Afghanistan at this stage lost two but they uh, were on the up with their run rates Ireland dropping over 10 now 10.2 to the over required Amazai's picked up a wicket he was delighted as was his captain as well Now, some pretty big news earlier today. Eti Salat and the Afghanistan Cricket Board signed a sponsorship agreement for one year. And this will give terrific support for domestic and also international cricket. So that's great. Well done, uh, Eti Salat, and uh, great to have them on board. They've been with us throughout this uh, tour as well. Sponsors are so important. That's a, a great deal. Well done. Nice for the Afghanistan Cricket Board as well. Great to have that. agreement done nice sponsorship well great news for domestic cricket in particular they got 250 over tournaments two t20 tournaments and then apl nasheb khan the ceo of afghanistan cricket board midwives ashraf is here the chairman that was cert certainly going down the leg side so national t20 spagiza cricket league apl three t20 tournaments in a year in a domestic calendar that's brilliant exciting news what on earth to tell it going straight but not very far now that's gone off the bat quite high and we've seen a few balls this evening going back to the Afghanistan innings as well where they just seem to be a bit of extra bounce on the surface what would have saved him there is he's looking to go straight across the line very easily find yourself getting a top edge Ibrahim Jadran playing a fine knock today was of the opinion it was not that easy getting off to a flying start on that pitch ball is stopping Yeah, it was that power play that really set up Afghanistan to get that high score in the series. And he got his uh, 72 and 51 balls. Five fours and three sixes in that innings. Career best as well. Hamid Hassan, the legend, will be happy the way fast bowlers have stood up today. Chip that away, could be out, should be out, is out. He's got another one. And the same guy's taking the catch. Dockrell this time departs. Fast bowlers union producing wicket here. Pitching up, trying to 
flick it through the onside, toe ending it. And a fine catch taken by Naveen Ulak. Inches above the ground. George Dockerell goes for three, 46 for five. Drinks on the field. Delaney in at number seven in Trouble Island at 46 for five now one ball shy of uh, the halfway mark of this innings Naveen Huck lurking in that region for the second time in two wickets uh, Namaza is delighted that he's now got two for so he's making a good contribution today two for seven he's got and he's almost completed three overs Has a struggle with the bat. It's important that he gets wickets. Two for seven. This has been fine spell from Omar Jai. He's been bowling with pace and he's bowling the right channel as well. That's ten overs up. Forty-six for five. Hundred and ten needed off sixty. Eleven runs to the over. Afghanistan one five five for seven. Ibrahim top scoring with seventy two career best as well. Ireland at the moment forty six for five at the halfway stage. And they found the going extremely tough. And they got early wickets yesterday in the Afghanistan innings. It was the opposite today. Fifteen for three at one stage. Couldn't quite get those fingers underneath it. Mohammed Nabi. Mango Karote. What a series he's had. That's been uh, hit very high indeed and safely.
having a bit of fun out there. Captain Rashid Khan and Gurbaz. This is a ball that almost presented an opportunity to Nabi. First ball of the over. Little paddle, nice and fine. He's got that away for four. That's a good shot. Good shot. Just using the depth of the crease, just moving across. He was quick, flat. He's getting into position early and getting it fine. 50 up for Ireland, but at the damage of five wickets. Advancing and slap that to the sweeper on the offside. Just a single. A lot of runs to get, Ireland. 103 required from here. Well, Karuti has been the find of the tournament from Afghanistan perspective with his fielding and with his ability to take wickets as well. In this, in the third one, the international making impression with the ball, changing the, the momentum. And in the second T20 as well. Firing it in, nicely bowled. You've got to do that to somebody like uh, Gareth Delaney, and you've got to make sure you stay far away from bowling length. And they're doing the right thing at the moment with the spinners in action because he uh, was hammering some seamers just yesterday. 11 gone, 54 for 5. There's no rest for the wicket as that run rate drops. Another spin has now been introduced. Mohammed Nabi. He had such a wonderful game yesterday. Let's look at his career. 93 wickets. Economy rate is uh, extremely good for T20 internationals. He's picked that up. He's hit that a long way, and I think that's gone for six. First ball, the over. That is a fine shot. That's the length you don't want to be bowling to Delaney. He's extended an invite, and he's accepted it. The length was there. Belted a few sixes the other day, and today as well. A fine stroke. And the hunt is on for the ball, I think. Ah, oh, they found it. There we go. Delaney might as well continue. Trying to launch as uh, best as he possibly can here because there's no point just uh, not going down fighting. The experience of Nabi showing straight away. A lot fuller, quicker. Looked like the attempted arm ball as well. Length is good, you can't get underneath those. Good stuff for Mohammed Nabi. Again. Loads of experience managing the ball in these kind of conditions at the same time. Bowling at a stage where they need to control rather than thinking about taking wickets here. Yeah, one thing that we uh, haven't spoken much about, and that's the encouragement to that Ishak, the keeper, is providing all the time. He has chatted non stop today. It's the arm ball that time. He is always encouraging the bowler. Where you're probably picking it up through the stump mics. Reminding Gabaz, he's in the wrong spot.
That's long and it's straight and it's powerful. Full blade of the bat. Such a good shot. Strong down the ground. Mohamed Nabi, he's got a couple of balls in between the over right in terms of length. The moment he gets it wrong, he's gone for six. Delightful ball striking down the ground. It's a big over there. It's 14 runs from it. Nabi's first. Round the wicket now. He goes again. Has he gone far enough? Not quite. Just a little bit of a fumble at the last minute for Mazai. But still, 16 runs off that over. 12 gone, 70 for five. It's a tall last over for Ireland and a tall order for them still to get across the line here. Oh, that's right out of the middle of the bat. That made such a sweet sound from Camphers Blade. He's getting in on the act as well now, and all of a sudden he and Delaney have added 30 in 14 balls. I've got Andrew and Fidai alongside me. Brian, you've watched enough of these two sides to know there's always a twist. Game obviously feels dead and buried at 46 for five. Of course it does. But Ireland with Delaney at seven, back much deeper than they do in the ODIs. Mark Adair to come fresh from those heroics last summer against Scotland. Barry McCarthy, no mug at number nine. Remember a maiden 50 against India in August. Due on the ball. Maybe just a glimmer. It's only a glimmer, Brian Murgatroyd, but a glimmer for Ireland still. Four more. Camfer going nicely. Camfer, of course, a hero in the T20 World Cup against uh, Scotland in Hobart in 2022, rescuing Ireland alongside George Dockrell from a seemingly hopeless position there. This wasn't much different, and all of a sudden, these two are putting on a show. What I liked about the shot was the game awareness. He knew where to hit it. He knew where the ball is going to come. So first a six and then a four. That's brilliant batting. Ten runs already. And he seems to have not been just done. Went for it, but will find the fielder. You probably heard the uh, shout of annoyance there from Curtis Camphor. He felt that uh, he could have found the gap at extra cover. It's a big gap between long off and square cover on the boundary. Gets Delaney back on strike, though. So three overs from one, three balls from one end and three from the other. Camphor has done his job. Delaney's got to do it. And he gave Afghanistan scare in the second T20. And he's already been on the charge. Now the nice and steady thing is that they've already got 12 runs off the first four balls, so they're not going for the unnecessary hits. See, that's how you carry the game home. Play till the end, and there's always a chance. To an extent, that's fair enough for Dai, but uh, the one thing you have to factor in is that Rashid Khan's got uh, two overs left. They're not going to be scoring ten and over off him. Yeah, and in some ways, Brian, if, if Ireland could even get six and over off him but not lose a wicket, I still think that would keep them alive and in the hunt. The shout is catch it, and Gerbaz does exactly that at long off. Camphor goes, a bright and breezy contribution from him, but it comes to an end, and Karote, having been savaged in that over, bounces back nicely. Ireland is six down. Well, that's what we were talking about. We just talked about the fact that there's a lot of cricket left. 
play till the end. Don't give away your wicket. Camford this time trying to go for yet another big hit into the safest hands of Rahmanullah Gurbas. Scottish Comfort, 28 runs for him. Islander, 82 for six. Mark Adair comes in at number eight. The island in a, a desperate situation at the 74 required from 42 balls. Yeah, how good that partnership was. 36 runs of 19 balls. Gave a scare to Afghanistan. Pin drop silence. There's a big crowd here in Sharjah enjoying the game of credit. Afghanistan's home ground. But Harota has come back really strong. He comes back so strong on the face of adversity. You hit him for a big shot, he will come back strong and take the wicket. He's just been doing it so often. Tell, he's one for the big stage. And here's Rashid Khan now back into action at the Sharjah club end. Goodness me, what a terrific leg break to start things. Yeah, this is the problem, this is the challenge now for Ireland. Two of the remaining seven overs will be bowled by the maestro, the magician himself. Good bat speed on show, but for Ireland, that required run rate, it's going to spiral out of control. All Delaney can do is smile. Rashid Khan telling Delaney, no, sir, you cannot go off to me. Will that trigger him? Mind games played. A lot of times you see one player going into the other player's skin, like trying to get the better of him. Rashid Khan this time around indicating. And now back with a smile. Such a beautiful character. Rashid Khan, the skipper of the Afghanistan side. He's had a wonderful come back since his injury. Yeah, love to see that spirit between these two sides. He's such a, a hero of the game, isn't he, Rashid Khan, the world game. And a little tidbit from before the toss, not today, but yesterday. Rashid Khan came up to Paul Sterling before the toss to apologise. He wanted to apologise for two of his younger players taking a run when he felt that they shouldn't have. There was a bit of acrimony, some animosity certainly, and no shortage of passion on display from both sides. But the way in which Rashid Khan apologised and the graciousness, Brian, of Paul Sterling in, in the way in which he accepted that apology, thought it was a lovely spirit of cricket between two absolute idols of the game in the two countries. Paul Sterling may be Ireland's best of all time, and I've almost no doubt that Rashid Khan will end up being Afghanistan's best of all time. Well, you already is a great ambassador for Afghanistan. You talk about Afghanistan right away, people tell you Rashid Khan, so much he's got fan following across the world. Yeah, that's brilliantly bowled. No answer to that. Rashid Khan bowls a brilliant over, three runs off it. Ireland after 14 are 85 for six. Well, problems at the top for Ireland and maybe 
You know, it's always harsh to pick on someone when they've got a golden duck like Clark and Tucker does today, Brian. But you just wonder, Ireland going to think about that batting order. Does Gareth Delaney need to go back up to a place where he had success previously? We heard some speculate about Harry Tector going up to three. Could Tucker drop down the order? I'd love to see Tector going up to three purely and simply because you want your best players facing as many deliveries as possible. I think Delaney at seven, he showed yesterday and he's showing again today what a useful person he is at this stage of the innings. He can hit a long ball. And I think Tucker, you know, he's capable of being busy at the back end. He could turn himself into a very effective finisher. And that's almost that role he plays in the ODI side so, so well. Just wonder what would actually it benefit Tucker's game and also benefit the overall balance of the T20 side. That's well Bolt followed him. So didn't give him the room, but still manages to get the boundary with that. That's a much needed boundary. Welcome boundary for Ireland. Good shot from Mark Adair. Need more of those from him. Well, gents, I'm going to save possibly my most ridiculous prediction for the final day, my final stint. I think if Ireland can keep Rashid Khan wicketless in his fourth and final over, they may still win this game. They need two a ball from here, but they have track record. They had pedigree of doing this with their deeper batting order. Mark Adair with a career best 72 off 36 in Edinburgh. Last July in that T20 World Cup Europe qualifier. And don't forget as well, Adair and Tector got 42 from the last 18 balls in the first T20 International last Friday. And there are similarities to that game against Scotland in Edinburgh. They were 44 for four. At one point, they were 108 for seven. They still nearly doubled their score from there. They were chasing down 214 to win. They came up just eight runs short. There's still a game alive here in a big way if they can keep Rashid Khan out in his final over. And this guy in the frame, Delaney, reminds me of Kevin O'Brien. Some of the shots that he plays this time around. Harota, not only a good bowler, but a wonderful fielder. Sprinted in second and was ready to return the throw back. Those big shots Kevin O'Brien used to hit for Ireland. Got a few shots that he hit the other day and today. Just love watching him, the height, the shots. So good to see Really terrific over that from Karote, just six runs from it. The asking rate goes up and up. It's 13 and over now. Ireland 91 for six. You can see the worms. There's not a, a monstrous difference, is there? They did get that late surge, 37 off the last three for Afghanistan. Ireland needs 65 off 30. The big problem is six of those balls going to be bowled by Rashid. I think they can maybe target Faruqi and Naveen at the death. Maybe Omertzai if he bowls. Well, the interesting thing now is that uh, Rashid is going to keep his fourth and final over up his sleeve. And he's brought back Omerzai, who really has been terrific this evening. It's been a, a series to forget for him, particularly with the bat. But tonight, he really has bounce back with the ball to very good effect look at those figures there 15 dot balls out of 18 deliveries that he's bowled fantastic stuff and it'll do him the power of good going into the IPL season for the Gujarat Titans yeah absolutely it'll be nice to finish on a high note he didn't bowl any loose deliveries he didn't give any weight on offer he swung it both ways and no surprise why he's got two wickets and have only conceded seven runs so bringing the fielder inside the circle Asma Tumarzai. Bold! Adair goes. And Omarzai's day continues to get better and better. Island seven down. Yeah, it's just been his day with the ball, isn't it? Mark Adair tried to clear the boundary rope. Gets, uh, gets an edge back onto the wicket. Omarzai gets his third for the night. 
Ireland lose their seventh, 91 on the board. Going from tough to tougher for Ireland now. Barry McCarthy in at number nine. 65 still required and just 29 balls in hand. Certainly not a record to be sniffed at. That one from Barry McCarthy. An effective player down the order, as Andrew Leonard's already mentioned. But uh, this is an altogether tougher assignment than anything he's faced in the past, I'm sure. Uh, that's good bowling, linked balls. You know, you've got three fielders down on the leg side. Trust in your skills with the link ball. And that's the wicket. It's a little bit of the Rashid Khan factor in, in this dismissal. You might say, what's Rashid Khan got to do with this delivery? Well, Ireland know of the five remaining overs. Khan's going to bowl one, which won't go for many. So they have to target the man who's bowling medium fast with no great movement of the ball at this stage of the innings. He's bowled brilliantly coming into now. Look at those figures. Three for eight. So as a consequence, Adair tries to overhit. He overswings at the delivery. He loses his shape. Yes, he's a bit unlucky because of the inside edge. But right now, that trophy is heading to the Blue Tigers. Delaney is still out there. How could you lose faith in him? Yeah, and that Barry McCarthy 50 against India. He will tell you and claim that he hits a bigger ball than anyone in this Irish setup. He's known as the BM around the squad. You can guess what that means. It's either big man or the best man. I think it's a bit of both. I thought it was Brian Murgatroyd. <laughs> he does love you too, Murgers, don't worry. But he does hit a big, clean ball. Prefers hitting off the medium pacers too than the spinners. Well, he's shown the intent. That's right. He just has to connect. And I'm sure with the force he puts behind it, if he connects, it will certainly go out of the park. The irony, though, is it's got to have to connect. Ireland maybe are once again running out of deliveries. Yeah, the Etisalat sponsor signed today with the Afghanistan Cricket Board for one year. Title sponsor will support the domestic cricket and the international cricket particularly the T20 World Cup coming up for Afghanistan, Shpagiza Cricket League, Bangladesh series with Afghanistan. So, so much cricket happening in Afghanistan. Oh, got him! That's a very, very good catch. Asmatullah Omarzai, things are just turning out so nicely for him. The Afghan fans are just loving it. This is the fourth for Asmatullah Omarzai. Appreciated by the teammates. That is absolutely his best figures, four for nine for now, and he's got a one more delivery to ball. So I think he was expecting this to come back a lot quicker than it did. It's come off the splice of the bat. His hands are there and waiting and waiting and waiting. The ball eventually gets there. He has a chuckle to himself. Barry McCarthy doesn't. And Ireland, 93 for eight. It's all looking a bit desperate for Ireland now. Josh Little 
in at number 10. The end of a terrific spell for Omazai. Four for nine, his best figures in all 2020 cricket. And Ireland, 93 for eight. Well, the end is nigh. As Matula Omarzai, sensational tonight. He's had his difficulties with bat in hand throughout the series, but tonight he has repaid the selector's faith with a wonderful four for nine. His CV in the T20 format. Pleasure to watch. Yeah, you've got to be pleased for him. Rashid now dragging that on the onside. Might be another catch. It is another catch. That's a blinder. That is an absolute beauty. What a fine grab that is. They are doing so well now, Afghanistan. They are picking up catches left, right and centre. The man who scored the runs has taken that catch. Abraham Zadran. Fine grab. Yeah, that's a really, really good catch. For many reasons. Makes the ground. Tracks the ball. It's there to hit. Gareth Delaney fancies it. He makes the ground quickly. It's a really good catch, a really good catch. He nearly overran it. Delaney, who promised a little, gone for 21. Nine down, 93 on the board. Nine down, one to get, and the celebrations are going to begin. Another look at the fine catch by Ibrahim Zadran. Yeah, that is an outstanding catch. It's outside the line, shouting for everything at the moment, the boys. As you can imagine, why? The batter, I don't know if you picked up as well. Miles outside off, he told Rashid Khan. No, I think Rashid knew that. Here's uh, two wickets to go. <laughs> Took a while to get to him. Four for nine, brilliant. Best figures by Afghanistan. Quick bowler, too. Nice work. Four for nine from four overs, and he might not get he might, might not get the old MOM. Against Ireland, let me just add that, against Ireland. That's what he's done throughout the series. Rashid Khan, four for 14 in the middle. That was just sensational. Three for 19 today. The first game, actually, three for 19. And just got one at the moment. And he's got one ball to go. It's hardly given away a run. Gone for 11 so far. And one ball shy of four overs. Yeah, five for 20 from 7.5 overs between Omar Zai and Rashid Khan. Five for 20. Not bad. Not a bad combo, Dino. Not at all. I mean, he's been outstanding. And this is the reason why Afghanistan set up couldn't wait for him to come back into the side. From his injury, he talked about the frustrations of being away himself. He's looking to launch down the ground then. 17 gone, 97 for nine.
So nine down now, 97 for nine it is. Naveen Huck's got two for ten. Ball beautifully at the top. That's off the back and it's going to run away. Threw that shot uh, too early. Just a single, the result. No, in for his third over. It's a cross-seam ball. That's why he's got a bit of extra bounce. But he's been outstanding as well. Two for ten. And there's 2.1 overs. Haven't seen him this effective with the ball in hand this series. This time it's the seam up, angled away. Looking to get the ball just to shape away from the right-hander if there is any. Bowled him. That's it. It's all over. Old smiles. Afghanistan have done it. Look at that crowd in the stands. They are so happy. The players will be so happy as well. It is all done here. Afghanistan have won by 57 runs. What a victory in the decider. They'll be so pleased about this. They went down in the test match. They won the one dayers and they've now won the T20 internationals. Good result for Afghanistan. Yeah, brilliant. Winning by 57 runs in a T20 match. That's an absolute thrashing, truth be told. Outstanding bowling performance to back up a really well manufactured batting display from Afghanistan. That is as close to a perfect 40 overs as you will put in in a T20 game. Rashid Khan winning the toss, get runs on the board. And the Seamers tonight have been outstanding for the men in blue. Absolutely marvellous scenes. After losing the first game, Afghanistan, they were hurting. They came back in style. They most certainly did. And you've got to take their hats off to them for the performance they put in tonight and yesterday to be able to pick themselves up after that first T20 International. That was the final wicket to fall. Pace off the ball while he's enjoyed that. Naveen Alhaki has performed outstandingly well this evening. Jonathan Trott, the coach, will be more than pleased. Oh, I thought we were going to get a smile there from Jonathan Trott, but I was optimistic. But he will be happy. He'll be very happy with his charges. Afghanistan cricket board can be pleased as well. Afghanistan have been superb to fight back so well after going down on that very first one. Paul Sterling's the first out there. Congratulating the, uh, the boys. They've uh, had some good rivalry. There's been some good passion in this series, which is always nice to see, I reckon. Once or twice, maybe it got a little bit feisty, but that's still OK. As long as they get out of control, in my book, anyway. But, uh, a really good performance from both these teams in Afghanistan, of course. So the happier of this bunch. Oh, to the guys that would be very pleased. And uh, I think something that we just need to say is that uh, Rashid Khan performed, but he also stayed fit. Had to play uh, three games in four days. Bounce back from yesterday and bounce back again today. And he seems to have no ill effects after that back surgery and the long rest that he's had. And uh, bowled superbly in the second one. Got that uh, player of the match award also. So Naveen Ulhaq was outstanding right at the top today. Ended up with three for ten, so uh, his return is very good. But Afghanistan can be uh, extremely pleased with the way they performed in this game. Well, Nabi Jr. He's been here every single night. 11.30. Can't be far off your bedtime. He's got bundles of energy, the youngster. Really good to, to be here in Sharjah. Warm hospitality from everybody at the ACB. Uh, they'll be happy, and there's uh, a bloke who's going to chat to us now. I'm yeah, sure he'll be extremely pleased as well. And he is with Fadai. Uh, wonderful performance today. Uh, you remained wicketless in the second T20I, but you brilliantly bowled. Conceded only 23 runs, but today, from the first ball, you came and you got two wickets, got on a hat trick, and then you also finished everything. Please walk us through how it was today. Yeah, coming into uh, the series, uh, uh, I was feeling well, but uh, the first game, it didn't uh, go uh, my way. Uh, it happens, but uh, as soon as the second game started, I told uh, our bowling coach that uh, I'll be much better in the second uh, T20, and so is uh, today also. So, yeah, it was a good game, and uh, the early breakthroughs were needed because uh, we needed some early breakthroughs to hold them back during the power play. Well, you certainly have brought Afghanistan into this game in the decider. 
you brought good omen for the Pakistan Super League side that you were playing for, and now you're going to IPL. How do you see your preparations? And then from here, you'll be going to the T20 World Cup representing Afghanistan. How does everything uh, seem to you? Yeah, it's shaping up quite well. I have been uh, playing quite a lot of T20 cricket, so it's a great, good preparation for me to be uh, heading into the T20 World Cup. IPL is one of the best leagues in the world going around, so yeah, it's going to be very much important for all the eight or seven players that are participating in that league going into the T20 World Cup later on. Now, which wicket did you like the most today? You got all the three batsmen bowled out. Which of those was the one that you liked the most? I think the, the second one I, I liked the most because... Uh, we planned it uh, that way, me, Nabi and uh, Rashid, and uh, luckily it came out of the hand quite well and uh, we got that wicket. Well, it's always absolutely nice to plan things and also it's very important that the plans uh, come together and you execute them nicely. Thank, thank you very much. Congratulations for brilliant performance today. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah, he was uh, terrific. As I said, three for ten is uh, what he finished up with, Naveen al Haq, as we look at the batting card for Ireland. Well, just Camper with his 28 off 23. Philip Hart right at the top, Balberni for nine, Sterling for four, Tucker first ball, and then big trouble at three for 15, wasn't much better at four for 39, and then it uh, didn't really get much better after that, to be honest, just 21 with Delaney, 98 all out it was, and the bowlers, three for 10 for Naveen or Hart, four for nine for Marzai, great to see him getting stuck into this series as well, one for 12 for the skipper Rashid, one for 26 for Karoto Kid, and all the bowlers will be very pleased with the work that they did. Right out, time for us to have a look at the highlights. Yeah, it was tough going for Ireland from the beginning. A couple of really nice boundaries from Balburnie. And after that, it was tough going. Got the ball to swing around early, did Naveen. That was the second one. First ball to Lorcan Tucker. And then that was the one from Fazalak Faruqi to dismiss the captain. 15 for three at that stage, and Ireland were already in trouble. Yeah, there's a lot of work to be done. They're right behind the eight ball. But while Harry Texter's at the crease, Ireland always have a bit of hope. Down touch straight away, picking up a lovely short arm jab over leg side. Miscues one. Naveen was well positioned, hardly had to move a muscle. Omar's eye got the big fish, got Harry Tector. George Dockrell, who's had a tough tour, missed the first game and has failed to get going in both his innings since coming back from an illness. Gareth Delaney, who has showed excellent promise. He is a powerful hitter, and Ireland need him moving forward to try and put some lusty blows over the ropes. Curtis Camfer found a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of form, some delicacy as he has in the past for Ireland in the white ball arena. Slicing one, slightly across the line, and Gerbaz hardly had the move, and Karate, who's been sensational in this tour, Picked up a pole marker there, dragging on, maybe losing a little bit of shape, but trying to go downtown. Omazai, cotton bowl, never easy. Off Barry McCarthy, and the wickets came in a little bit of a procession. Hoyt leg side, that was a great catch. Ibrahim has had a wonderful day. Excellent innings with the bat and swooping low. Slower ball, game done and dusted. Afghanistan, 155 for seven it was. Ibrahim was outstanding with his 72 not out of 51 deliveries. And then this 27 played nice, a good support there in that little partnership. And uh, Delaney picked up one. The wicks were shared for Ireland, and Ireland in reply, just 98. With the Marzai picking up four for nine. Naveen Huck three for ten. Afghanistan winning by 57 runs. And that's the fifth win in a bilateral T20 international series. Afghanistan versus Ireland, the fifth out of six. So that's a great record. Afghanistan against Ireland in T20 internationals. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll be back very soon for the presentation. Don't go too far away.
Welcome back. Now, just before we go down for the post-match presentation, let's just go through that match summary again of the all-important decider, the third game in this series. Afghanistan, 155 for seven it was. Ibrahim, 72, not out of 51 deliveries. The wickets are shared, by the way. Ishak, 27. And Ireland, uh, all out for 98. Shy of 18 overs. Camper, top score for 28. Delaney, 21. Amazai was terrific with the ball, four for nine. And the Beano Huck was outstanding right at the top. Ended up with uh, three for ten after a couple of uh, very quick wickets, important wickets at the start. And Rashid and Faruqi, a wicket apiece in Afghanistan, won by 57 runs in the end. OK, it's time for the presentation now. Let's go downstairs and join Andrew Leonard. Yes, time for the post-series presentation here for the final Afghanistan versus Ireland T20I match 2024. We've seen a truly fantastic and such a memorable series between these two great old rivals with the host Afghanistan completing the turnaround in this T20I series to take a win by 57 runs and indeed the series 2-1. Firstly, please allow me to introduce you to my presentation party. Starting next to me, to my left, the legendary former all-round cricketer for Afghanistan, now the chairman of the Afghanistan Cricket Board, Mr. Mirwez Ashraf. Next to him is Mr. Naseeb Khan, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Afghanistan Cricket Board. Mr. Abdullah Ge Geber, the Chief Commercial Officer for Etisalat Afghanistan, is next to Mr. Matthew Wilshire, the Chairman of Etisalat Afghanistan, who signed that extended partnership with the Afghanistan Cricket Board. Next to Matthew is Mr. Willems Chair of Paramabil, the VAS manager for Eden Red. And then we've got Abhishek Ja, the board member for Hedge and Sachs. And then Mr. Abdul Rahman Fida, the Afghan General Council Dubai. Gentlemen, you're all very welcome and thank you so much all for your support. Great to have you alongside me. So before we get into things, just a final huge thanks to our sponsors. Indeed, Eti Salat, who've signed that extended deal. Also Super Cola, Bank Milli Afghan and Hedge Sachs for their valuable contribution over sport. And for all the fans who attended tonight, thank you so much for being here to see that fantastic Afghanistan victory. Now, we've got plenty of awards to give out and indeed we'll hear from both captains, find out who the player of the match is and the player of the series is. We're going to start with the stylish player of the match who's going to receive a cheque for 25,000 Afghani that will be presented by Mr Abdul Rahman Fida, the Afghan General Council. And it goes to a man who produced his career best bowling figures of four for nine tonight. The winner of the stylish player of the match is Azmatullah Ormatzai. So he's going to receive his cheque for 25,000 Afghani. A wonderful bounce back spell from the all rounder, and we wish you well going out to the IPL, Asmatullah. Our second award is going to be for the biggest six hitter of the night. That'll be presented by Mr. Abhishek Ja, a board member of Hedge and Sachs, and they're going to receive a cheque for 40,000 Afghan. It goes to the highest scorer of the series today. He made a marvellous 72 with three sixes. It goes to Ibrahim Zadran. So Ibrahim will receive his cheque for 40,000 Afghani and pose for a celebratory photo as well. And now our next award is for the player of the match. And there were special mentions today for Asmatullah Ormatsai and Naveen ul -Haq, who was outstanding with the new ball for Afghanistan. But again, this one is going to be presented. Firstly, a cheque for 50,000 Afghani by Mr. Williams Cherub Paramalabil, the VAS manager for Eden Red. And then they're going to receive the player of the match trophy to be presented by Mr. Mirez Ashraf, the chairman of the ACB. And it goes again for that innings of 72 of 51 to Ibrahim Zadran. So firstly, he's going to receive his cheque for 50,000 Afghanis. And then rather fittingly, he's going to receive his trophy next from Mirwez Ashraf. He's going to bring the cheque with him. Now, Ibrahim, we're going to have a short interview with you as well. Ibrahim, if you can come up and join me, that would be great. Ibrahim, many congratulations. A wonderful performance. You must be delighted with your innings of 72. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yeah, I'm very happy with my performance today. So, I didn't play well in the last two games, but I contributed in this in, in today's game. 
Tell me about how good it feels to turn around the series and beat a very good Ireland side who played some great cricket themselves. Yeah, Ireland, they played a good game in the first, uh, first game of the series. Uh, they won from us, then we come back stronger. We won the second and third game. So uh, from my side, especially, I wanted to play well in the last two games, but uh, it didn't uh, goes, uh, you know, go on, uh, on my way. So that's why I contributed today and I wanted to play well into the game. You're one of the few players in this Afghanistan team in all three formats, Test Match, ODI and T20I. Is that something you really enjoy, playing all the different paces? Yeah, it's quite tough uh, to play all three formats, but I'm trying to adjust myself with each format as, as soon as I can, so as quickly as I can. Uh, but uh, I'm trying to enjoy it, so that's why. Uh, if I play Test Cricket, ODI, T20, so my aim is in my uh, i try to enjoy it and i try to adjust myself very quickly to each and every format finally just a quick word about that t20 world cup that's going to come up how much are you and indeed your afghan teammates looking forward to that world cup out in the caribbean yeah we don't have any series before the world cup we played uh, uh, three four series before that so we will try to uh, get prepared for that and uh, we will uh, try to think that where should we improve. Uh, we already covered some things, you know, that area we covered that uh, we needed before the World Cup. But uh, as a cricketer, uh, as a player, uh, I will work hard for the World Cup, uh, that uh, which expect from me uh, a lot. So everyone uh, will try to have a good uh, World Cup in USA. Many congratulations, the player of the match today. You played brilliantly. Thank you so much. Okay, Ibrahim Zadram, what a performance from him. Sensational, the highest score, individual score of the series. We're going to call next upon Ireland's captain. We'll speak to Paul Sterling. Sterling, commiserations. It was a series that gripped us from start to finish, but really just that sixth and final innings ended up being the telling factor. You, you couldn't get that chase of 156 done. Yeah, we were slightly off the pace tonight, um, beaten by the better side. Uh, slightly disappointing way to end the series, but I'm really proud of some of the performance that we put in. A couple of real magical spells from the bowlers up top and Ben White to come back from injury and pick up those wickets in the first game. Uh, and a couple of other performances that will stand in good stead going forward. Did you feel that that 155 was just maybe 15 too many? Obviously, you're, you're really going after it. You're up against it. Difficult to chase under lights here. I think it probably shows how good a knock that was from Zadran. It's hard to bowl in batsman here uh, towards the back end, and he was in, certainly made us pay in those death overs at the end. Certainly 150 suggests here that it's probably few too many. But uh, again, that's stuff that we've got to work on over the next 10 weeks before we breach the USA. I think it's going to be seven official T20Is before that T20 World Cup. The batting order in particular, is that something you might consider having a look at? You So many different options and, and a good bit of depth. I think we're getting to that stage where we're probably picking our best side in most of the games and a little bit of consistency as well. Uh, you've got to pick your players and back them and I think that's what we're going to do over the next couple of months and we'll reassess as always after that. Your reflections on the tour as a whole, obviously disappointment losing both white ball series but that historic first test match victory is going to live long in the memory for everyone involved in Irish cricket. Yeah, 100%. Look, that test match was special. The tour as a whole has been brilliant. We love coming here to the UAE and playing against Afghanistan. They always seem to be great series uh, and we look forward to the next one. Sterling, I want to wish you, your side, all the backroom staff, everyone involved, the very best for the T20 World Cup. You've been brilliant tourists here and we've really enjoyed watching you play. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, Paul Sterling, the captain of Ireland. OK, time for the big award. It's the Player of the Series Award. And we're going to give some special mentions once I tell you what they're going to win. It will be presented, the winner, with a cheque for 75,000 Afghani. That will be presented by Mr. Matthew Wilshere, the chairman of Eti Salat Afghanistan. They'll also receive a trophy for the Player of the Series, presented by Mr. Nasib Khan, the CEO of the ACB. Now, within the commentary box, there was plenty of discussion around this one, and there were special mentions for Ireland's Josh Little, Gareth Delaney, Ben White and Barry McCarthy and for Afghanistan, Mohamed Nabi and the youngster on his debut series in T20i cricket, Nangelia Karote were brilliant, but it goes to the man who coupled his 33 runs with the bat with being the leading wicket taker in the series he took 8 wickets at an economy rate of just 3.75 and an average of 5.62 it goes to Afghanistan's hero their captain, Rashid Khan
and he's going to receive his check for 75,000 Afghan and also now the trophy for the player of the series. We're going to call upon him for an interview as well. He's going to speak to my co-commentator in just a moment after one more ceremonial photo. Big round of applause once more for the player of the series, Rashid Khan. He'll speak now to Ahmed Fadai. Well, Rashid Khan, what a comeback to the international stage. Congratulations with the performance of the player of the series. Three wickets in the first game, four to follow, and then one today, only giving away 12 runs, knowing that they were chasing 156. What a turnaround this has been. What a wonderful return to the international stage this has been for you. You win the series, and you've trusted the youth that has come along. How has this been for you? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim I think uh, so happy to be... Uh, on a winning side, winning the series, and uh, yeah, I think it was uh, a bit uh, tough for me to come back after three, four months and uh, perform a game as as I was doing. But uh, was a kind of fresh start for me. I just tried my best to enjoy my cricket, and uh, yeah, it is a great win, series win for us, especially the youngster. You know, they came up, they dis uh, they they observed that pressure inside, and uh, they delivered as well. You know, wherever they got the opportunity, they delivered their performance, and especially. Uh, the senior players like Nabi, Ibrahim, uh, Azmat, Naveen, they stood up and they performed for the team. So, so happy for them. Well, you talked about enjoyment. I believe everyone has enjoyed, especially the way you have performed in the entire team. You brought along the youth, the young players, Nangyalai Harotai, to name one among the others. It's really important that as a captain, you backed them. How do you see the future of the Afghanistan cricket into the hands of the young lads like Nangyalai Harotai and the others? Well, cricket is all about the enjoyment, you know, I think the more you enjoy, the better your performance inside and uh, that's how you have to give the kind of uh, free hand to all the young, so just go there, express your talent, express your skills and uh, skills which brought you here, you just need to bring that skills in the middle as well and especially Siddiq, Ijaz, Ishaq and Nangyal, the way, you know, they, they came under pressure, they performed there. I think, I think I'm so happy and, and the future is very bright of Afghanistan cricket. Youngster coming, a very talented youngster coming and uh, the more they get the opportunity on this stage to, to, to play, I think the better they will become in future. Well, you talk about the future and we're just going to see the Afghanistan team playing in the T20 World Cup. How do you see the preparations going into the T20 World Cup for Afghanistan? It's been great so far. Uh, I think we, we planned that from the last one and a half, two years since I became the captain. And I think uh, that was the only uh, big event had in the mind that we had to perform in that World Cup. And I think the pre preparation has been great so far. We have done all the homework. And now it's, I think, uh, just two months uh, where we need to be well prepared and cover those areas we, where we are struggling and to go to the World Cup with fully prepared and uh, yeah, mentally and, and physically both. Well, I think it was brilliant to see Ibrahim Zadran perform with the bat. It was equally important to see the Pacers performing, Naween ul -Haq, the man of the show, and then later on, Azmatullah Omarzai. It was the brilliance of the leadership, knowing that there was swing on the wicket, and that's why you gave four overs to Azmatullah Omarzai. That paid off. So really, kudos to you. Wonderful tournament. Congratulations for being the player of the series, and you'll be taking that winner's trophy. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay, and now the next ask task I would give you, Rashid, please. I'll, I'll take that for you. There you go. If you could go and join, please, Mr. Mirez Ashraf, the chairman of the ACB, and Mr. Abdullah Gaber, the chief commercial officer of Etisalat Afghanistan, to be presented with this series trophy. The 2-1 winners, please give a big round of applause to Afghanistan. And after a few ceremonial photos... And Rashid, the final act I would ask you to do is go and join your team. Over with the champions board, Rashid. We'll just ask you to go and join your team. The champions again, many congratulations to Rashid Khan and Afghanistan, the 2-1 series winners.
in the Etisalat Cup. Sensational work by this talented, young, exciting side. More victories are in the offing, no doubt about it. Watch out for this side in the USA and the Caribbean. In the upcoming T20 World Cup, they are packed with superstars and great to have Rashid Khan back after a very long layoff. Congratulations, Afghanistan. Brilliant here in Sharjah, beating Ireland 2-1 in the Yeti Salat Cup. OK, well, that's going to be it from the post-match presentation. Join us after the break for the post-match show.
So what a final game that was. It was the decider. We've been talking about that all the time. And Afghanistan have done it. They have won the T20 International Series by winning the third one. And that's what they did. They lost the first, they won the second, and they won the third. Afghanistan 155 for seven. Good round was really nice with his 72 off uh, 51. And the wickets were shared, by the way. Ishak got 27. He was the next highest score. That showed how much of runs I've run dominated things and Ireland didn't reply well they were in a lot of trouble when they lost wickets early and rolled over for 98. Amazai picked up four for nine but Naveen or Huck did some serious damage right at the top. He picked up two. Faruqi got one as well. There were three for not many right at the start of this uh, innings and Naveen picked up three for ten in the end so good work for him. Rashid got uh, one and Faruqi the one as I mentioned and Campbell was the top score with just 28 and Afghanistan won by 57 runs and win the series 2-1. Rashid Khan, by the way, was the uh, player of the series. So a great performance from Rashid Khan in his comeback series. Great to see him fit again. And he did uh, a fine job. Right, Tino's alongside me. Right, Tino, how did you think about that? What are your thoughts looking back on that one-day series, on the, well, the T20 series? Outstanding performance, I think, from Ireland in that first game. I think even better from Afghanistan to be able to come back in the second game. Just got over the line by 10 runs yesterday, but to come out the way they did today and finish that off with a convincing victory, I think just shows their quality in this format of the game. Going to have a look at some of the uh, the guys that performed really well for them. For, for first, we're going to look at uh, Zadran and the work that he did. Ibrahim Zadran, he played really nicely for his uh, 72. He's a man who's in good form and he's becoming very dependable for Afghanistan at uh, the top of the order. Runs in Sri Lanka, runs in the Test match, runs in the ODIs, and then on a crucial day today to make sure that his team gets over the line, a career best score of 72 for him as well. So uh, it really is uh, good to see that he's in the runs and taking a leadership role as well at the top of the order. We've seen that they haven't quite got the runs going. Gorbaz has struggled. But uh, for him to play the innings that he played today, I think also just shows the maturity that uh, he has come along with over the last few months and how important he is to that top order. Yeah, and I think that knock will do him the world of good going forward in his uh, career as well, in particular that World Cup not too far away. He wasn't the only star, of course. Naveen all huck What about the work he did right at the top? Picked up three in the end, but two important wickets at the top. Yeah, it was interesting to see the Afghanistan bowlers got the ball to swing around a little bit more today than the Irish did. So I thought he bowled extremely well. And we haven't seen him strike. He hasn't taken the new ball as often as he would have liked of late in the series. But uh, that one, of course, was the final wicket right at the end. But I thought he did an outstanding job today. And we always talk about, yes, getting a decent score on the board, which Afghanistan did, but early wickets are crucial. And we've seen in this series when they've got early wickets, it's been very effective for the team. Makes it easier for the spinners when they come on later. Oh, yeah had the build-up to this game. We were talking about uh, Afghanistan had uh, one guy that was missing so far in their lineup, and it was a Mazai because he wasn't doing anything at all with the bat <laughs> or the ball. We know he had a couple of first ballers, which wasn't uh, great for him. Didn't get any runs today, but he was very good with the ball. He was outstanding with the ball, and uh, I think it's uh, so important for the all-rounders when one thing's not working so well for you to be able to get the other one going. And All we've been talking about in this series is how Omazai struggled, how he's had four scores of naught off the first ball, but I think to be able to pick this himself up the way that he has just also shows that he's got great resolve I think what the Afghanistan selectors have done as well is they've shown a lot of courage to make sure they keep him in the side yep. there are discussions going on whether he would be able to be still picked in the side today personally I was surprised but I think he's just come and he's shown there that even if the bat's not working for him, he's got the quality as well with the ball in yeah, hand. I think he's a very talented cricket and it was great to see him come to the fore. Great to see him smiling as well. And uh, Rashid Khan actually engulfed him and he got that first wicket, which uh, meant that he wanted him to perform and uh, be part of that side as, uh, as well. Right, now that World Cup is not too far away. The ICC World Cup in the USA and also uh, the West Indies or the Caribbean. Uh, what strides have the teams made in their run to that, do you think? Oh, I think... Uh, for Afghanistan, massive in this series in white ball cricket because they struggled um, in Sri Lanka just a month ago, lost all the ODIs, they won just the last T20 right at the end. So I think they uh, probably weren't feeling so confident about their cricket. So uh, that's why, I especially I said, to come back from that uh, first T20 to make sure they come and they win these last two is massive. I think Karotai coming into the side as a young player has shown the quality that he's got as well. And just the pool of players that we've seen from Afghanistan is something that will bode uh, extremely well well for them. So uh, I think they've got a nice set of players. We haven't seen their top 11 playing in this T20. Some guys injured, some guys not being picked on the side. But um, I think they're in a very good space. Ireland will come away from this and think, you know what, we could have with a good performance with the bat yesterday in the middle part of the innings, actually won the series. They haven't won too many yep. against Afghanistan. But uh, I think both sides will be very happy with the uh, 
cricket that they've played now and Afghanistan, of course, don't have anything else before the World Cup. But uh, they'll be happy with the players off to the IPL, a good eight of them or so. And they'll be looking for some good performances from them. Are you sometimes uh, delighted, surprised? Excited by the talent for some of these Afghanistan players? Oh, it's it's unbelievable how they keep churning out these cricketers, Hazy. And, you know, you look at all these leagues that are being played around the world now and you find a new young fast bowler, you see a left arm spinner and more often than not, it's an Afghan player. Somebody who we've never heard of, not even at this level, but like I said, Karotai has shown that they get the opportunity, they're willing to grab it. I think Karotai said to the selectors here, listen, Mujib's out the side, but I'm not somebody that you can just leave. I want to be on that airplane to the West Indies in America, and I think he probably will be. Okay, terrific. All right, Gatine, thanks very much uh, for your views. Nice to work with the Combox as well. We had uh, quite a bit of fun, so that's uh, <laughs> terrific as well. Right, uh, so that's it. So uh, that was a very exciting tour. Of course, uh, Ireland won that test series. Afghanistan won the one-day international series, and Afghanistan have won the T20 international series. And, of course, this is a Firebird production brought to you by the Afghanistan Cricket Board. I had a ball bring it to you, so did Tino as well. The rest of us hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for being with us, and we'll look forward to your company next time. Good night.